you know. On the field, Kerry Lang, Mike Walker with you from Delaware State. As the captains go to the midfield for the coin toss. Delaware State, those are new uniforms for the Hornets. We haven't seen these uniforms before. These red uniforms we've seen, but they've always had white block numbers on them. These are more rounded numbers, and they're kind of a, a blue scale uh, that's dark at the top and fades down a little bit uh, toward the bottom. Uh, and the red helmet with state on it. Uh, so they broke out some new uniforms here today. Yeah, they must have heard your complaints about the inability to see the numbers on the jerseys as they sure used to be. I'm not sure these are going to so, be any help. <laughs> well, I, I think the white outline against that red and the blue on the inside might help you at least help. get a little closer yeah. uh, to the numbers. But again, beautiful uniforms. I see the stripe down the helmet that yeah. I've never seen before. So again, those are the type Testing. of little things Testing. that you inject into your program when it's trending upward. And uh, Rod Milstead feels this program is going to trend upward this year. Um, his two previous full seasons in, in uh, 18 and 19, the team was picked in the preseason polls, finished dead last in the MEAC. This year, they were picked to finish in the fourth spot. And Rod Milstead's reaction was, that's an improvement. We're yep. not being picked for last right now. We're in the middle of the pack and anything can happen. You know, if you're, if you're Coach Milstead, you'll love that type of stuff because you can motivate your team around uh, selections in terms of where you're supposed to finish in terms of conference play. Uh, but more to the point, I think it took Coach Milstead about three years, honestly, to transform the program so that it began to literally look like a Division One program. Uh, he inherited a project. Uh, but he was the first to tell you that, listen, the team I inherited, they were Hornets. Uh, they'd signed up to be Hornets. So he had to restore the hive uh, and make sure that the Hornets could thrive uh, in the environment that they're, they're currently in. Georgetown in white uniforms with dark blue numerals, look almost black, uh, dark blue helmets, and they have that uh, bulldog on the side. Ooh, um, but the, the mascot, of course, of Georgetown is a Hoya. What you may ask is a Hoya. Well, to some people it's a sprawling or evergreen shrub, but uh, not at Georgetown. I thought it was a uh, seven-foot center, but I guess it's not. <laughs> well, they've had a few of those <laughs> that, have, that have gone on to the NBA. Um, the, the Hoya comes from a, a Greek and Latin term somehow mixed together that started the cheer Hoya Saxa, which translates into what rocks. So that's where Hoya comes from. I don't but, think we have to explain what a hornet is. Everybody knows yeah. a hornet is an apex predator for the insect world. So hopefully uh, the hornets uh, will play their role in today's game. They've chosen to uh, illustrate their, their insignia as a bulldog rather than a rock because that doesn't put fear in anybody's heart. <laughs> well, you know, well a well-placed rock can instill can. some fear. Thank you, David. Some people. <laughs> right. Goliath uh, needs a thank you uh, and a get well note after that. Uh, yeah, a well-placed rock can do the job. Georgetown will kick off to Delaware State. The Hornets will be working from our right to our left in those bright yellow uniforms. And we'll see how we we're able to see those numbers. I, I kind of like the plain yellow block letters, but we'll see what happens here. Georgetown has kind of stylized numbers, too. Very few using block letters anymore. This kickoff will be taken by the Hornets at the 12-yard line and brought up the middle, cutting to the outside, finds a little bit of a seam, dives over some people, regaining his feet up to the 38-yard lines on the return for Delaware State, and that looked like Wade Inge on the return. Man, that's an excellent uh, kickoff return by Inge, just giving it everything he had, getting north and south, Gary, finding a seam on the right side of the return. Uh, jumping on the back of his own player, and after doing that, picking up an additional five or six yards. Great yeah, return. He, he rode the guy for a couple of yards and then uh, got his feet again and, and picked up more yardage. So that's a very determined return by Wade Inge. Yeah, just like they drew it up in practice. <laughs> they practiced jumping on the guy's back. Hornets will have the ball starting on the far side hash mark. Let's see what uh, this quarterback here today, Tyleek Bethea, is able to do. Rolling to his left side, looks downfield, wants to throw. He'll dump it off, and it is a short completion. Get him about five yards on that play, completed to Bazette Woodley. It's a tough pass because it's a quick out, but he's rolling to his left. He's a right-handed quarterback, so he's got to really twist his upper body around to find the wide receiver. He didn't find anybody he liked, but after doing a little bit of scramble and a little improv, improv in the pocket, he did find Bazette Woodley. 
Woodley's first catch of the season gets him six yards. It'll be second down for Delaware State. Ball on the near side hash mark now as two players come in motion. Woodley drops back off the line of scrimmage so they don't have too many men up on the line. They'll give it to Savion Wilkerson, and Savion Wilkerson is up to the 46-yard line, and the Hornets will have a third down and two. Wilkerson had a great game last week. Three touchdowns, 92 yards, got a couple of honors in the conference, and he's just looking to build on uh, what he did last week. Hornets took offensive player, defensive player, and special teams player in the MEAC this, uh, after last week's game. Wilkerson again gets the call, and he is going to be just short of the first down, I believe. You know, that's the type of yardage they got to be able to pick up when it's third and, and short. you got to be able to get behind those big hogs up front and pick up three or four yards. Uh, even if the defense knows exactly what you're getting ready to do. Fourth down and a yard to go at the 47-yard line, and they will send in the punting unit. So it's not a three-and-out situation, but Dell State, after you know a couple of uh, successful plays and moving the chains once, they're going to opt to punt instead of go for it, going for it on fourth and short. Matt Knoll, who put one out at the five-yard line last week in the punt for the Hornets, waiting, gets the snap, and gets away a nice end-over-end kick. It'll bounce at about the 21-yard line, be fielded back inside the 15, and uh, before we even have a tackle, we have whistles. Looked like it was a fair catch call. Oh, okay. Not supposed to run with the ball after you make a fair catch call. The official had to remind him. Yeah. So, yeah, he, I thought I saw a fair catch call, but when he fielded the ball, then he took off with it. So we went with the play, but uh, it will be Hoya's ball, first and 10 at their own 15-yard line. Let's set that offense for you. Joseph Brunel, and he's got some very strong credentials as a quarterback with a father who played a number of years in the National Football League, Mark Brunel. Fifth-year player for Georgetown at quarterback. Takes a low snap, hands it off on first down. Herman Moultrie, the third, gets the call. Gets a, maybe a yard up to the 16. Good interior play by the Delaware State uh, defensive line and linebackers. Just basically sliding uh, to the side of the play. And, you know, just a group tackle. That means everybody pretty much filling their gaps and just feeling the flow of the play and, and, and playing good defense. Brunel. From the shotgun, two men in the backfield. One goes in motion. He'll hand it off to the fullback, fake the handoff to the fullback. Short pass completed to the 20-yard line, taken in there by Sergio Porto Banco. So it's going to bring up a third down and five for the Hoyas. Harris Freeman on the tackle. You know, a big interception in last week's game. But, again, I love the way he comes up and runs support. He's a big dude, too, man. 6'4", 200-plus pounds. When he comes up, he's going to introduce himself. One back in the backfield. Receiver in the slot on the right side. Quick pass out on the left side, trying to get it to Herman Moultrie, and it's off his hands, incomplete. It's fourth down and five, and they'll send in the punting unit. The Hornets have a player down. That pass went through Mike, right through Moultrie's hands, Gary. Had he caught that ball, he might have not only picked up that first down, but a whole lot of yards behind that. Yeah. Uh, Delaware State looked like they were a little confused in coverage. He did a little trade situation with the wide receiver, and he got lost in that, that switch call. So that defense got to be careful about, you know, making sure they know what their assignments are. Mentioned Joseph Brunel, his father. 19 seasons in the National Football League, quarterback at uh, Green Bay, uh, Jacksonville, Washington, and uh, a couple of other teams. He was his uh, son's head coach in high school, and now Mark Brunel is the quarterback coach for the Detroit Lions. We have a break in the action here. We will take this break as well. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN+. Plus. Putting you in HBCU, we are HSRN. You know, if we take that rapper back to the side. Punter standing at his own five-yard line. Davis Walker, and that check that, not Walker, but he gets away a nice high punt. Taken at the 27-yard line for Delaware State. Brought up the left side hash mark across the 40 and maybe up to the 42-yard on the return. And a big pile up there as they unstack. They'll mark the line of scrimmage, and we'll get that for you in just a moment. 
pretty good return, though, for Delaware State. Any time that a punt returner has to go back on the ball, it makes it tough because then he's got to change the direction and come forward. You know, the other thing is that the punter sometimes can outkick the coverage, which, which creates more line, lanes and spaces for returns. And I thought Pila did a pretty good job still early in the season. But when you're a punt returner, you got to be very aggressive with your north and south. You can't be guessing. Uh, about what you're going to do. And he brought it straight forward. Charles Peeler on the return to the 41-yard line. First down for Delaware State there with their second possession of the game. Receivers split out wide on each side. And now we have a penalty marker. It is not too much time. There were nine seconds left on the play clock, but it will be an illegal procedure call. False start on Delaware State. Penalties did cause some problems for both teams last week, and in that third quarter, hurt Delaware State more uh, as it uh, caused the offense to not be able to move the ball as well. And then that uh, had the defense on the field longer than they needed to be after they played well in the first half. Here's Wilkerson taking around the right tackle. Has a bit of an opening across the 45 up to the 47-yard line. Savion Wilkerson had just a little bit of an opening, had good blocking to get him out on that right side, and then he turned it upfield. Looked like he was going to go inside the tackles. He bounces it outside the tackles, finds a little seam, turns on the Jets, and picks up very good yards uh, on that first down carry. like the way Wilkerson plays. Small guy, uh, but, but carries a load when he hits that hole, too. He's got good uh, weight, but very small in stature. Pass downfield intended for Trey Gross. Good coverage on Gross. Looked like uh, Davis Walker uh, back there. There was no check that uh, Jonathan Honore on coverage on Trail Gro Trey Gross with him step for step. Man, that was a great pass by Tyleek Bethea. Trey Gross tried to one-hand it and couldn't pull it in, but the ball literally hit Trey Gross in that one hand. Those are the type of catches if you want to be a big-time receiver, you got to make them. They're down in four now for the Hornets. They have to convert here. And it'll be Bethea on the keeper. Can't can't find much running room, manages to work his way up to the 50-yard line, and the Hornets will have a fourth down and one again. Last time, they were a couple of yards back on their own side of the field. They punted. Let's see what they choose to do this time. Still got to work to establish a rhythm, uh, Delaware State University. Again, they got to figure out, do we going to run the ball well or are we going to pass the ball well? And right now, they still look like they're trying to figure out what they do well. They're going to send out the punting unit. But Thea came to the sideline first, and I think his helmet came off on the play, which meant he had to come off for a play. And then the, the punting unit went onto the field. The rest of the offensive unit came off. But Bethea was coming off regardless. Let's see what Matt Knoll is able to do on this punt. Had a nice one the first time. Takes the snap cleanly at the 35-yard line. Wanted to run with it, then decided not to. Pressure came. He got off a kick off the side of his foot. Let's see where they're going to say this one went out of bounds. Not much yardage on it. Thought about running to the right side, and then the defense was there. He had to kick it, and he had to hurry it on the run. Tried rugby style, but uh, I don't think he was quite ready for rugby. Not really sure what the ultimate goal on that punt was, but... The result is great field position for Georgetown on their second possession. They'll get it from the 37-yard line. And Joseph Brunel, veteran quarterback for the Hoyas. And as I was saying earlier, his father was his high school coach. His father, 19 seasons in the NFL as a quarterback, and now quarterback coach with the Lions. Here's Brunel throwing on first down to Cameron Creighton. Creighton up to the 43-yard line. That's a nice six-yard pickup. Just pitch and catch. They're giving the quarterback pretty good protection. He's getting the shotgun. He's not experiencing any pressure. Kind of has an idea who he's going to throw to before the ball snap. And Dell State just literally has to, you know, kind of wait and see, you know, what happens to, as far as defense is concerned. Bowie State uh, kind of picked apart that defense in the third quarter last week with those little dink passes. They'll hand off, fake the handoff. Brunel on the carry. He'll get a first down as he takes it out to his 49-yard line. Twice he's faked that handoff to the fullback and then carried it himself. Mark the line of scrimmage at the 49. Defensively, Dell State has to actually do something well as well. They have to either stop the run, commit to that, or make sure that they can stop the pass. Brunel fakes the handoff again. He rolls right side. Short pass complete to the 41-yard line inside the 40 to the 
38-yard line. Another catch for Cameron Creighton. Playing on the play, but again, uh, Georgetown just doing a good job of methodically moving down the field, not trying to hit any home runs, just dinking and dunking, moving the chains. An eligible man downfield. That'll bring it back and get the ball back for Delaware State. Or move the ball back on Georgetown. Take it back to the 44-yard line. Makes it first down and 15 for the Hoyas. First and 15 at the... Brunel trying to pass it out in the flat, tried to set up a screen to Joshua Stakely. It was off of his hands, and I'll tell you what, very close to a Hornet being able to pick off that pass. Linebacker Brooks Parker out there. If he had picked it off, it might have been another pick six for Delaware State. managed to kind of insert himself into that play. Second and 15. Brunel out of the shotgun. Steps back. Now he'll run it right up the middle. He gets hit as he gets to the 47-yard line, pushed back. And they'll say he got maybe to the 48. It'll be third down and long for the Hoyas. So if you're Dell State defensively, you can't let anything get behind you. You have to know where that first down uh, marker is, and you got to play very aggressive to that point. You got to make sure that you keep everything in front of you, and somebody catches the ball in front of you. That you know you have to make that tackle to prevent uh, a first down. Third down and eleven for Georgetown. Brunel from the gun, lone back in the backfield to his right. Steps back, wants to throw, pressures there. He runs to the right side, looks downfield, just dumps it off before he gets sacked in the backfield. Good pursuit on that play. For Delaware State in the backfield, they were not letting him get away. That was Kamari Jackson, the defensive back, on that blitz. Jackson doing a good job of mirroring Brunel, and the defensive backs did a good job in coverage, Gary, so they just made Brunel hold the ball as long as he possibly could. He couldn't make something happen. Flushed out of the pocket. Punting situation for Georgetown. Here's the problem, though. Bowie State was able to complete passes last week when the quarterback got flushed out of the pocket. They come up the middle, but they need to contain from the sides, too. They did that early in the game, recorded some sacks. Now, Georgetown will punt for their second time. Two empty possessions, scoreless possessions for Georgetown and Delaware State University. DSU's got to make something happen. We have a whistle, and uh, that may be uh, too much time for Georgetown. Delay of game. Make it fourth down and 15 again. As the quarterback, uh, the Hornets rather, wait for this punt. Charles Peeler stands at his 20 yard line to take the kick. End over end with a backward spin. He's going to let this one go, and it hit at about the five-yard line, even though it had a backward spin on it. When it hit, it hit on the edge of the ball and found its way into the end zone for the touchback. So the Hornets, when we come back, will have the ball first and ten, but there's a break. We'll take a timeout. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN+, Plus, putting the U in HBCU. We're HSRN. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can be recycled into other stuff. Well, I want my wrapper to be a
So the Hornets back on offense. Delaware State third possession of the game. I'm Gary Lang. Mike Walker with me as Delaware State sets up. Bethea with the lone back in the backfield. That's Savion Wilkerson. They split out a couple of receivers on each side. The give is to Wilkerson. Tries to take it to the outside. He'll lose yardage back to the 16-yard line. Great penetration by the right side of the defense. Yeah, they're not really respecting Delaware State University's pass game right now, so they're loading up the box, and they're going to probably bring a lot of pressure, and they're going to force Tyleek Bethea to complete some passes. Maybe what he needs to do is some of those little dink passes too, some of the things across the middle that seems to open up when teams blitz. The defensive backs will go with the, with the receivers, but some people need to cut off the, uh, the route and go short. Here's Bethea on second down and 14, throwing over the middle just like we called for, and it's complete. Miles Morales, the tight end, gets the Hornets up to the 35 yard, 36 yard line, and that's a Delaware State first down. That's just a great pass and a great pattern by the, the tight end, doing a good job of finding that seam, releasing off the line of scrimmage. Tyleek Bethea put that ball out there where only he could catch it, and he picks up big yards on that pass. They have to keep those short, targeted passes in his repertoire to help him build his confidence, and that'll loosen up his run game and his deep ball. Perfectly thrown ball, too. The receiver was able to take it on the run, not have to change his speed, didn't have to reach for the ball. It was right there. Bethea with a good pass that time. He wants to go to the air again. They set up at the screen, left side. Trey Gross has a little bit of an opening, and he gets across the 50-yard line into Hoya territory to the 49. Yards after the catch by Trey Gross. He picked up about seven or eight yards after making that reception. Yeah, that's just, again, easy pitch and catch. Just a quick wide receiver screen to Trey Gross. He gets a couple of blocks from his other receivers. He finds that seam and just turns on the Jets and picks up the first. That's the threat the Hornets need. Get him open in space and let him run. He can do it. He can put on the burners and make things happen. Here's Bethea with another first down. High snap, pulls it down. Wanted to go left side to Gross. Has to scramble, goes to the right side. He'll slide and take the loss on the play of three yards. Choosing not to take the hit, he took the loss of three. Well, make it four back to the 47-yard line. Yeah, with his... Uh, as his experience grows, he'll start to realize when plays like that happen, sometimes guys position themselves for the easy catch. They had a couple of guys standing in the flats wide open. I think he did the right thing, not forcing the pass and just taking the loss. Of course, the other thing would be to try to find an area where the receiver was standing so he could throw the ball and get and dump it off. Here's Wilkerson. He comes around the left side, gets it up to the 47-yard line. They'll call it the 48-yard line. He got back the yardage that was lost plus one. To make it third and nine. He probably should have been tackled for about a five-yard loss. He did yeah. a great job of just hitting a, a, a stop and cut move on two Georgetown defenders who got great penetration. They should have tackled him for a loss, and he ended up picking up some yards on the play. He can fool some people, can't he? he can, very few players can stop and go and make something happen. Usually when you stop, you're pretty much done for the play. But Wilkerson can shift around and change the speeds. Get it into a different gear. Bethea on third down. Pressure. He'll scramble. Penalty marker in the Hornets' backfield. Bethea taken down at the 46-yard line of Georgetown. But I think this one's going to move the ball back on the Hornets, and it will. The center judge Solomon Ricks indicating initially that the penalty is on the Hornets. And he will step off the yardage here. No, he Holding is. offense, number 68. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Georgetown declining the penalty. So they'll put the ball back at the Hoyas 47 yard line. And on fourth down and eight, Delaware State will let their punter come in again. Third kick of the game for Matt Knoll. All three from almost the same area of the field. This kick, he definitely wants to try to place them deep. Shouldn't try to do any running or anything. Just get a nice, solid punt and let the defense do what it does. There's a good snap and a good kick. Spiraling will hit and be out of bounds around the 21-22 yard line of Georgetown. We'll see what the officials say. And they're going to say the 22. So Georgetown, when we come back, will have the ball for their third series of the game. Timeout on the field. 
You're watching MEAC football on ESPN+. Plus. Putting to you an HBCU, we are HSRN. Georgetown with a first down from their own 27-yard line, giving the ball to the fullback and works his way through for about four yards. Had to uh, really worm his way through. A couple of tacklers there. That was a, a good second and third effort on the carry by Herman Moultrie III. Yeah, just a, one of those small, powerful fire plugs behind a big offensive line, Gary, and he just does a good job of driving his legs and picking up every inch that's available to him. Second down and six as the quarterback, Brunel, rolls left side complete. Man was wide open, and down the sideline, picking up yardage, it's Joshua Tomas. And that's a first down for the Hoyas, their first of the game, up to their own 46-yard line. Georgetown doing a good job in that play design of, of creating new coverage problems for Delaware State University, and they pick up big yards on essentially just a, 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 a flat uh, screen to the flat. They tried it earlier, almost completed the pass. The throw was just off the mark, that time perfect. And they picked up good yardage on it. Here's Brunel, the first down from his 46. Out of the gun, looks right side. They set the screen, and the Hornets get all over top of it there. Moultrie on the catch, got only a yard. That should have gone for more. Really no blocking out there for Moultrie, and about three Hornets responded. i tell you the the biggest player on that play was a guy not even involved in the tackle, and that was Brooks Parker. He did a great job of sealing that corner and forcing Moultrie back into the defense that resulted in that short game. Second and nine. The give is to Moultrie straight ahead, puts his head down, pushes his way to the 49-yard line, picks up two. That brings up third down and seven now for the Hoyas. It's a big defensive play for Dell State. They have to get a stop and create a, a punt situation for Georgetown. They can't allow... Georgetown's confidence to grow. The more their confidence grows, the more difficult it's going to be for Dell State to put that confidence back in the bottom. So the defense being called on here to try to get the ball back to the offense, the defense that did so well last week against Bowie State. Brunel, but a little bit of time throwing. It is going to be incomplete. It's picked off by Delaware State. The tip off the receiver couldn't hold on to it on the hit, and Delaware State comes away with the interception. And let's try to pick up here. And let's try to pick up here uh, who the interception was made by for Delaware State. He was in on grabbing the receiver. David Bowman? Yep. Yep. Milford's finest. I think he still might be the all-time leading rusher at Milford High. I think he is. Brought him here at Delaware State University, and, and, you know, he was just one of many good running backs, and he played two ways in high school, so they felt like, hey, he might be a better cover guy at this level. And they got him on the defensive side of things. 6,068 yards rushing from scrimmage at Milford High School, and there's a busted play for Delaware State as the quarterback has to eat the ball, and it's going to be a loss back to the 29. Five-yard loss for the Hornets. David Bowman. Yards from scrimmage, 6,068. Rushed for 5,600. He's still part of the mile club, you know, 5,280 feet for a mile. Yeah. Well, had 376 tackles as a defensive player and gets his interception first of the season for Bowman. Second down and 15 for Delaware State. Bethea rolls right side, dumps off a little short pass, complete. And they'll pick up just a few yards on the play up to the 37-yard line. Miles Morales with the catch, the tight end. All he did was take a couple steps downfield, turn around, and Bethea delivered the ball. Yeah, and he, what he's got to realize is, you know, you're a big tight end. Your job is to kind of lumber down the field. Yeah. You're not a wide receiver. You're not supposed to be trying to cut and fake people. Just, just run over people. Yeah, just lower your shoulder and pick up as many yards as you can. Third and seven. As Bethea looks to the sideline now and gets the play. As receivers split out wide on both sides. Two on the left side. Looking to the left side. Wants to throw into the middle. Going to be complete. 
wide open in the middle for Delaware State. On the completion. That looked like Kawana Kali. Now, we've known him as number 80, but he changed his number. He's right. now number 14. Right. And he did a good job, Gary, sitting behind those linebackers, created a, a, a nice big target for Tyleek Bethea, and he just hit his uh, receiver in both his hands and picked up a huge first down. What we talked about, getting the guy into that open area into the middle and throwing the short pass, picking up the yardage and the first down. Very important. If you can hold those linebackers, you can loosen up your run game. Collie on the good catch, but they have a snap a little bit to his left side. He had to jump over there, and Savion Wilkerson finds some opening around the right side outside that tackle and goes down to around the 29-yard line of Georgetown. Love his north and south game, Gary. I mean, he's got all the cuts you want out of a, a big-time running back, but at the end of the day, it's always about going north and south, not east and west with him. Was the offensive player of the week in the MEAC last week with his three touchdowns. Be a contender almost every week playing like that. Bethea, quick pass out left side. Trey Gross blows through one man who thought he could put a shoulder down and knock Gross out of bounds. Wrong decision as Gross picked up an extra five yards. Yeah, he's a tweener. You know, you got to really pay attention to this guy. He's got the body of a full blown man out there, all right? He plays he, basketball too. He is you're a full grown man. Yeah, you're not going to tackle him with one arm. You got to wrap that guy up and, like a and Christmas present. Throwing your shoulder into him is not going to affect him at all. First and 10 at the 14 now for Delaware State. Georgetown wants a timeout. This might be the best drive timeout, for Delaware uh, State Georgetown. University. Yeah. Good balance on the yeah, run in the pass game. I'll tell you what, so far the best drive of the season for the Hornets as we come down here to uh, just two minutes, two seconds rather, left in the first quarter. And we'll keep it right here for now. All natural gourmet chips with no MSG or gluten. That's Symphony Potato Chips. Order yours online at symphonychips.com. George, uh, Delaware State now knocking at the door inside the red zone at the 14-yard line of Georgetown. And the Hoyas just wanted to try to get that defense back together. The Hornets have thrown some different offensive plays at them, really mixed it up here on this drive. The give into the backfield. We'll see who that is. That is not Wilkerson on that carry. This is where the formula ends and the magic begins. We take the mold, shake the mold, and break the mold. From late nights in the gym. Quarter to begin at Delaware State University. Gary Lang, Mike Walker. Hornets with a second down and seven at the Georgetown 11-yard line as we return. Tariq Bethea hands off. Savion Wilkerson turns the corner on the right side. Cuts it into an opening. Touchdown, Delaware State. Savion Wilkerson with an 11-yard run. That's the way to start a second quarter. All he does is score, Gary. That's what it appears. Give him the ball, he scores touchdown. Well, that's kind of why they brought him here, isn't it? Savion Wilkerson with the touchdown. 11 yards. His fourth of the season. That's a great drive for Delaware State University. He does two things, Gary. One, it gives the offense a whole lot of confidence in their ability as a unit. And more importantly, it keeps the defense off the field. Jake Burdell in to kick the extra point. It is good. Jake Burdell makes it a 7-6 game. Delaware State in front. Well, that's the way to start the second quarter with 14.53 left in the first half. Get yourself an 11-yard touchdown run and put your team in front. Savion Wilkerson, if he stays healthy all season, he's going to be a factor in the MEAC. You know, he'd like to be uh, one of those elite members of the 1,000-yard rushing club at Delaware State University. We're talking about a program that started back in 1924, and it's literally only about 12 guys who can say that they're members uh, of that organization, that group of 1,000-yard rushers. So his job is to see if he can become a member. Mike Walker, what was it like? Today we're in Carolina Beach, making a twisted tea drop. Here. And again, it'll be Jake Burdell doing the kicking. 
from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. We had a talk about Gettysburg at one of the practices two weeks ago. Burdell, line drive kick. Fumbled at the seven, still hasn't been picked up. Now it is by the Georgetown return man. And he gets up across the 15-yard line. The 17 or 18-yard stumbles down there. It's uh, Donovan Salgano on the return. You can see some of that 600-plus day rust uh, on some of these Georgetown athletes not being able to you know, cleanly field uh, kickoffs, and that's going to hurt uh, their field position. Doing the return. Going to sit in. Holding on uh, Georgetown on the return, we had a marker. So rather than having the ball on their own 19-yard line, they'll move it back now to the 9-yard line. Now, that Hornet defense that uh, was so tough last week, they see this situation and they start salivating. Well-rested, Gary, and I think they can really try to uh, press the issue here. They have uh, Georgetown with their backs against uh, their own end zone, and you know this is a great time to get aggressive with that front defensive line some stunts get those linebackers in on some pressure no room for a mistake when you're inside your own 10 yard line so georgetown has a tough thing coming up here there's plenty of field in front of them too so the defensive players have to there's coming up here there's plenty of field in front of them. the defensive players have to cover Brunel fakes the handoff, rolls right side, the handoff, rolls right side. Little short pass and snapped up immediately after the catch. Skyler springs on the catch, but he didn't get anything after he made the catch except a big hit. They'll pick up five yards. Size Guthrie on that hit. Just a great job of keeping his head up so he doesn't get the uh, infraction of targeting. But he just drove his face mask right through his chest on that tackle. Textbook tackle. Guthrie with a big game last week. Two interceptions, including an 87-yard pick six. They'll keep the ball on the ground and run it short of the first down out to the 16-yard line on the Georgetown carry. Cartez Campbell carried the ball on that play. It's third down and three. A lot of things you can do on third down and three, even inside your own 20. Brunel has worked that short pass effectively here in the first half, in the first uh, 17 minutes of the game at least. Brunel with a low snap, takes it, throws. Going to be complete and knocked out of bounds after the catch is Asante Das. Good crossing patterns by Georgetown. Uh, uh, created that separation that they just needed uh, just to get that ball from Brunel's hands to the receiver's hands. And Dell State lost in a little bit of the coverage and the switch, and that's all they needed to yep. make that play happen. That play designed simply to get the yardage for the first down. Nothing more. Now on the end around, they come to the left side of the offense, and uh, the Dell State defense is there waiting for it. They pursued it well. The team Kearney on the carry. Kamari Jackson on the tackle doing a good job of reacting uh, with the defensive line did of forcing that, that that play to go outside. Jackson comes up in his linebacker position makes a good tackle. Lost almost a yard on the play here. We're going to call it second and 11. Ball near side hash mark. Georgetown in white uniforms. Going from our left to our right. Brunel fake handoff twice. Throwing downfield, it will be intercepted. And up, they're going to say incomplete pass. The ball did hit the ground. A couple people had shots at pulling it in, but the ball did touch the ground. Hornets almost had a, their second pick of the game. Brunel didn't get enough on that, and his receiver had to hold up. That made the opportunity for the defense to catch up with the play as well. Looked like Jerrine Granger, he had uh, an opportunity to... to maybe intercept that ball. It looked like he jumped a little bit early. Yep. And on his way down, the receiver did a great job of breaking up the interception. Well, I think he took it away. First, first he took it away from Creighton, and then Creighton took it away from Granger. Here's Brunel on third down and 11. Pressure there. He's going to be sacked. And the Hornets coming up with another sack back to the 13-yard line. Ronald Holmes in on that sack for Delaware State University. It was a delayed sack, too. He's almost like he was uh, scouting or looking at Brunel. When Brunel tucked and tried to run that ball, he came right up and made a big hit. 
Fourth down and long yardage now. Well-rested defense for Delaware State University does its job. They, they hold Georgetown deep on their side of the field and, and hopefully with a good punt return, Delaware State will have excellent field position. Punter listed as Davis Walker for Georgetown. Standing two yards in his own end zone. And before they can snap the ball off, we have a whistle, and I think that's going to be a delay of game on the Hoyas. That might be the second time they had a delay of game on a punt situation. Yeah. It False is. start. False start is what they'll call it this time. So this one's not a that's delay of game, goal. but it was very close to it. I was, I was looking at the clock counting down the game clock or the play clock. So now the ball gets set back on the eight-yard line, and the punter goes even deeper into the end zone, about three yards from the back line of the end zone. The Hornets look like they're sending two men. High snap. He got it away. They were coming after the punter on that. Ball taken at the 50-yard line. Hole through the middle, brought up across the 40 to around the 36-yard line of Georgetown. Hornets offense will get the ball with great field possession here. And that's a good punt return for Delaware State by Charles Peeler. It's about a 14-yard return on the punt. Eleven minutes, twenty-nine seconds remain. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can deep in their own territory, force the punt. Good return of about uh, 14 yard, 13, 14 yards for the Hornets. Now Bethea on the pitch out goes to Wade Inge. And Inge takes it around the left side, just outside the 30-yard line. They'll put him at the 32, and that's a five-yard gain for Delaware State. Six yards. That's a good opening uh, play for the drive. Again, I like to see them run the ball, and I like to see them be successful. It doesn't have to be inside the tackles, but I like to just see Delaware State University establish its run game. That's going to open up the pass game for Tyleek Bethea. Second down and four is the call. Fake handoff. Bethea rolls right, looks downfield, throwing. It's going to be complete inside the 15-yard line, down around the 12, 13-yard line, and saying, I'm not going down. After making the catch for Delaware State is E.J. Core, the wide receiver. Liked what he did, Gary. Broke his pattern off, created a big target by Talik Bethea, who scrambled to his right. That's his strong side. And he delivered a great pass downfield to pick up big yards on that busted pass play. Caught the ball at the 12. Forward progress mark there. First down. Hornets. Bethea with a lone back in the backfield to his right side. Gives it off to Wade Inge. Inge tries to turn it around upfield. And that plant foot just slipped out as he made his cut. He went down. A loss of yardage on the play of about uh, two yards. They try to take Inge off that tackle. Uh, try to, I guess, bounce it outside a little bit, give them an opportunity to, to find some lanes out there. But I think they should maybe tighten down their gaps and just drive forward. That's a big offensive line. Get your big offensive back behind them and just pound this Georgetown defense. Take some life out of them. Loss of two, second down and 12 at the Hoyas 14-yard line. Bethea with a snap out of the shotgun, throwing end zone. What's the call? Complete touchdown. Hornets touchdown. Perfectly thrown ball. The receiver just had to cut back inside and make the catch as the defender went to the outside. Right now, I tell you, Talik Bethea is having a heck of a first half. One incomplete pass, well over 100 yards passing and a touchdown all in the first half with plenty of time left to go. And that's Jerish Halsey on the catch for Delaware State. His first touchdown reception as a Hornet. Got a couple of catches last week against Bowie State. 12-yard touchdown. The extra point kick by Jake Burdell is good. The Hornets extend the lead with 9 minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the first half. It's Delaware State 14, Georgetown. Here in the second quarter of this afternoon's game, First one on a running play by Savion Wilkerson of 11 yards, and then that Tyreek Bethea to Jerish Halsey 12-yard touchdown pass. Extra point kicks by Jake Burdell were good. So in the red zone, the Hornets effective today 
Two trips to the red zone, two touchdowns. High kickoff taken at the five by Georgetown. Brought right up the right side, just outside the hash mark, and uh, the tackle made right around the 25-yard line. A couple players mixed up with each other out near the 30-yard line, away from the tackle. That's a blocker and a and one of those uh, run down the field and give your body up guys for Delaware State got together. Little hug, they lost their balance. It was kind of a touching moment. You know, guys just want to give it their all, and sometimes they don't hear the whistle. But, uh, you know, it wasn't one of those plays where it was a dirty play. It was just two no. guys being very aggressive. And they just they had their arms wrapped around each other. They weren't giving up. They both went to the field. Georgetown starting off at their 25-yard line with a first down. Here's Brunel. Hands off on first down. The give on that play was to Herman Moultrie. And Moultrie got to turn the corner on the outside, outside of the tackle, but then he was met after a two-yard gain. Now this Delaware State defense starting to perk up a little bit and look like they want to try to dominate this grass area out there between the lines. Second down and eight. Brunel, short pass to the flat on the side. Another pickup of three to four yards up to the 31-yard line. Georgetown now with a third down and four. Working those quick outs, but not much else working passing for Brunel this afternoon. Joseph Brunel, fifth year student at Georgetown. Hands off, fakes the handoff, gives the handoff on, to the fullback on third down. And they're not going to get the first down on this. They're going to come up about two yards short. Kamari Jackson, Padel State on that play. He's been very active in today's game. He's had a couple of huge tackles. And I tell you, that was a huge one on that third and short play because yep. he's going to give the ball right back to a Dell State offense that I think right now, Gary, is starting to believe in itself. And the better Tyleek Bethea plays, the, the more confident this offense is going to be. They want to get him back on the field as soon as possible. It'll be three and out, four and out for uh, Georgetown as they'll punt again. This one coming up a little bit short, right to the return man at the 27-yard line. Breaking away from the pack, taking it to the right side. And it's Charles Peeler bringing it back for Delaware State. A pretty nice return from his own 27 out to the 45-yard That's a good 18-yard return. He returned. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store. 409, 9,000. Taking me back to the 80s with Earth, Wind, and Fire. Or I'm watching the Trolls movie. One or the other. First and 10, Delaware State from their own 43-yard line. They'll give it. To wade in, she tries to take it around the left side, gets grabbed and pulled down right at the 45-yard line. Good time, good job by Georgetown stretching that play out. You know, you could see Inge didn't really know what he wanted to do on that play. Didn't know if he wanted to cut it up, so he just kept stringing it out, stringing it out, hoping he could catch that corner. And just a good job by Georgetown uh, uh, just allowing a couple yards on that play. Second down and eight after the two-yard pickup. And I wonder what is going on with Savion Wilkerson here. I don't see him even on the sideline. We'll check again. But there, once to go downfield, it's going to be incomplete. Good coverage downfield there by Jonathan Honore, and it looked like that pass bounced off his shoulder pad. We have a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if we can get this call. Holding. Holding. Offense. 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 Number 68. 10-yard penalty. See the second down. Puts the ball back. Inside the Hornets' 35-yard line. Double whammy for Dell State. Incomplete pass and yep. a penalty. So, oh, again, you're going to start uh, your second down of this possession uh, with 20 yards to go. So they're going to have to put the ball in the air here. Bethea taking the snap at his own 30. Steps back. Dumps off a little screen pass. And they caught Inge. The blocking was there, but breaking through to make the tackle, Justin Fontenot. And they hold the Hornets to a one-yard gain. 
Looked like Matthew Dirks out on that particular play uh, on the uh, left side just missed the defender. Yeah. Had he blocked that defender, Inge would still be running as I'm talking right now. We just couldn't make that, that contact block. Third down now, and uh, what we would call back in the day, punny team get ready. Yeah, third down and 17. <laughs> Who was the quarterback back in those days? Oh, yeah. Here's Bethea. Caught in the backfield, spins away from the tackler, gets back to the original line of scrimmage of the 43-yard line. You're saying the team had no confidence in the quarterback? Well, you know, you get to a certain point, you know, in those thirds downs, and, you know, there are very few plays that are designed to pick up 17, 18 yards. So when you see that, you kind of let your opponent know, strap your chin strap up and stop chewing that bubble gum. You're going to be in the game in a play or two. You didn't just hand the ball off to that Bashir guy that was in the backfield? And well, his ability 20. to run sideways, we'd still be waiting for the whistle to blow right now. So, no, we wouldn't do that. Fourth down and nine. <laughs> Never missed a game because of injury, though. That Tip. ball partially deflected or completely deflected on the punt. The Hornets will watch this one roll. They got a good roll out of that considering what happened down to the 22-yard line of Georgetown. That's the second time that Georgetown has come close to blocking one of Matt Knowles' punts, so he's got to be conscious of that. He's got to get his timing together. He doesn't have a whole lot of time back there to kind of set his – feet and get into this real pretty rhythm. You just got to put a foot into that ball, make sure it doesn't get blocked. And it looked like Coach Milstead was down there advising him on he's only got a certain amount of time to get that ball off. So Georgetown gets the possession here first and 10 from their own 21-yard line. They'll run the ball on first down and try to come up the middle and a couple of yards out to the 23-yard line. Stakely, the ball carrier for the Hoyas. A lot of good team defense with De by Delaware State University. We we're not seeing a whole lot of solo tackles. We're seeing a whole lot of group tackles. So clearly these guys paid attention and filmed this week. And the quarterback, Brunel, going to keep the ball as pressure came, and he managed to get back to the line of scrimmage of the 23-yard line. Talk about Brunel and his father being in the NFL. There are five, six players on this uh, Georgetown roster who have a relative who played in the National Football League. We talked a moment ago about uh, Jonathan uh, Joshua Stakely, who ran the ball. His cousin, Tim Manoa, played a couple of seasons uh, for the Cleveland Browns and the Indianapolis Colts. Back in the day, 1987 to 1990, it's third down, long yardage for the Hoyas. Brunel throwing, and it is broken up. Great coverage, step for step on the coverage for Delaware State. Daniel Douglas trying to get the pass to Sergio Protobanco, but Douglas this was right there on coverage. Solid defensive coverage by uh, Douglas, and he did exactly what you're supposed to do, Gary. You kind of you want to cradle the wide receiver with one arm, and you want to try to use your other arm to deflect the ball, and that's exactly what he did. Great job, and I think Delaware State University should have pretty good field position some, after this punt. Some players in that situation go for the pick, miss it, and then the receiver has it. Here's the punt by Georgetown. Not a good one. It's short. It'll take a little bit of a bounce down to the 41-yard line of the Hornets. This is good field position to come up with here on this drive. Anytime you're outside your own 40 to start a drive, you've got in good field position. 60 yards to go, yeah. uh, 59 yards. And again, I, I think I want to see a more balanced possession on this drive at Delaware State University. I want to see a good mix of pass and run. Uh, it should be penalty-free, uh, mistake-free. This is when you have to kind of start to, uh, you know, hit what the, uh, what the Eddie Robinson used to say, hit a cockroach with a sledgehammer. You have to start to really put the pressure on. That usually stops them. 
Here's Wilkerson back into the game. He takes it up to the 45-yard line, just took it out behind the left guard and picked up four yards. Wondered what happened to Wilkerson as they had engine there for a couple of series. Now Wilkerson back in the game for Delaware State. You know, here at Dell State, they do kind of running back by committee and wide receiver by committee as well. They have a lot of talented guys. They like to get a lot of guys in, but I think Wilkerson is starting to emerge as, quote-unquote, that guy. Who you go to? They give it to him again. He comes around the right side. Tries to cut it upfield. Hit at the 45-yard line. Breaks the tackle and then runs and goes out of bounds very close to the first down marker. We'll have to see what the officials do. They're already moving the sticks. First down, Hornets. That's what Wilkerson will do for you. He might have been stopped at the 45. Somebody hit him low, and he just kept running. It was like nobody touched him. Good balance, low center of gravity. Yep. Bethea rolls left side after taking the snap, looks downfield, throwing incomplete, trying to get at that time to uh, Kawana Kali. And Kuali, Kawana Kali down there, good coverage on him by a. Uh, Romello Walton, the defensive back. Again, they're taking that right-handed quarterback and rolling him to his left. And you tend to be less accurate as mm -hmm. a QB when you're rolling to what they call your weak side. Uh, so, you know, obviously when you're calling these plays, you have to take those things into consideration. That's, that's tough getting the footing together with, with throwing the ball because you, you might be stepping off on the wrong foot when you're throwing it. Here's Wilkerson going around the left side, caught in the backfield Great pursuit back there in the backfield by the linebacker Owen Kessler for Georgetown. Wasn't an ROP play. That was just a handoff because Tyleek Bethea didn't have to read that defensive end. If he did, he obviously would have kept the ball. He'd still be running right now, probably uh, in line for some restaurant at the Dover Mall. That's how wide open it would have been. And, you know, obviously that was just a sweep that was pursued extremely well uh, by Georgetown. Kessler with a great play there. Loss of three for the Hornets brings up third down and 13. So let's see what's in the bag of tricks here that comes in from the sideline for Tyleek Bethea. Has two receivers out split on the right side, one on the left side, and Delaware State's going to have to burn a timeout here. They just didn't have something they liked when they looked out there at that defense on I'm third out. down and 13. Delaware State, 30 second you know, time. Two minutes out. left yeah, first yeah. in the uh, first half. And... You know, if you're Delaware State University, you have to look at this situation as possibly two plays to pick up a first down. So if they can get seven, eight yards, they may have an, an actual chance to pick up the first down on the next play. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Uh, you know, it, it might be that pass play into the middle again uh, that gets you about eight yards and then run after the catch. Could get you 13 yards and a first down. They have a very mobile quarterback. Talik Buffet is actually a very good runner. Uh, that's one of the skill sets that I really hope he focuses on because there's a lot of hidden yards in the run game for him, and I think it'll open up his pass game. But, again, they took the timeout, Gary, I believe, because they really want to make sure that they pick up some positive yardage on this play. Governor of Delaware here today. He heard about this team and wanted to see what they look like. 2-0-2 remaining in the first half. Bethea brings the team back to the line of scrimmage, calls the signals, takes the snap. Drops back, has time now, has to run to the left side. Got hit just as he threw the ball, and it'll be an incomplete pass. Held it just a second too long. Again, rolling to his left, right-handed quarterback. Just the timing on a lot of those passes is difficult. And that was just good defensive uh, pressure uh, by Georgetown. Yep. Wasn't even a blitz. You know, Delaware State offensive lineman just getting beat on basic pass protection. So with 4th and 13, Matt Knoll to punt here for Georgetown. The return man standing back at his 15-yard line. That's Joshua Tomas. He'll take it at the 12, 17 and gets hit. Not long after taking the ball in, returns it back out to around the 20-yard line. So a minute and 45 left here for Georgetown to try to put something on the scoreboard before they go in for halftime. We have a little bit of a breeze here in Dover this afternoon, but a nice afternoon for football, not too hot, not cold. And the temperature here, not that city, 
but Dover, 79 degrees right now with 44% humidity and just a bit of a six mile per hour breeze or something in that range. They'll run to the right side. It's Herman Moultrie. Fake the handoff to Moultrie. They throw to the left side, rather, and they try to get it to Sergio Protobanco. It's incomplete. Rommel Harris Freeman on the coverage. Clock stops on that place with just a minute and 40 seconds left. If you're Delaware State University, you got to keep an eye on that clock. Good defense with some incomplete passes. You can literally get this ball back with a whole lot of time left. Easily. Easily. Incomplete passes stopping the clock. Moultrie goes in motion to the far side. Fake handoff. Brunel dumps it off. Complete to Portobanco. He got tackled and then realized he didn't land on the ground. He landed on the, the, the tackler, so he rolled forward for an additional yard. That's good thinking. Brunel off the play action kind of got flushed out of the pocket, even though he was running uh, to his left, and he still managed to corkscrew his body all around uh, to just pick up. A quick couple of yards on that pass play. Third down and five. Brunel throwing. It's going to be almost intercepted. Jawain Granger just was not able to pull that one in. He dropped back in coverage. It looked like it was going to be a big completion to Joshua Tomas. Granger dropped back, had the ball in his hands, just couldn't get a hold of it and pull it in. That's the second one for Granger today. It's great. They're great breakups, but they're also opportunities for INTs and at this level, Gary, they're game changers. You gotta make these INTs. You gotta be able to pull them in. But with a decent punt return here, they could end up with the ball in a similar field position or maybe even better. Let's see what happens. They would have had the ball back around their own 45 yard line. This is a high punt. And it will take a backward bounce on Georgetown. Hornets will have the ball about the 45 yard line. So just about where they would have had it if Granger had been able to pick it off and turn around and run, run back upfield. So it's the second time uh, in this quarter that Delaware State's going to start uh, a possession. Uh, Outside their own 40. Yeah, and again, the, the clock's on. Obviously, they're going to have to have a very good mix of run and pass because the goal right now, Gary, isn't necessarily to get a touchdown. It's just to get points. If you can get a field goal, that's great, too. You want to extend your lead. You want to end it the quarter and the half uh, scoring points. If I had to play defense here, I'd be watching from where Trey Gross is in the slot, watching him go across the middle on a, on a post route. Here's Bethea looking downfield. He was looking on that play for Kawana Kali, and it was similar. He was cutting in on a post route, but just over his head. Talib, Almost picked off, too. Talib Bethea kind of... Had to step up in the pocket, a little bit of pressure. I thought they might have been offsides by Georgetown, but the mm -hmm. official didn't call it. And Tyleek Bethea just couldn't link up with Kawana Kali. It looked as if he put some air underneath that ball. Uh, he might have been able to catch Kawana Kali running. Second down and 10. But they went to the area of the field that I thought maybe they would go to. Here's Bethea throwing sideline complete. That's pulled in by Bazette Woodley. It will be good for a Hornet first down at the 46-yard line of Georgetown. Stepping out of bounds, stopping the clock with 47 seconds left in the half. That's good thinking by Woodley. Design sideline pass to stop the clock and get the first down. Bethea on the gun again, throwing it's picked off by Georgetown at the 40-yard line. Now brought back across the 50 to the 46-47 yard line of Delaware State. And uh, we're seeing Justin Fontenot have a pretty good afternoon out there against Delaware State. As he gets the interception. Fontenot just stepped in front and made the pick. I think Tyleek Bethea kind of telegraphed where that ball was going. I thought to his right that he could have just dumped the ball off too, but I guess he was going aggressive trying to make something happen and the results and in an interception. Now Georgetown has 38 seconds to try to put some points on the board here before the first half ends. The the Joseph Brunel, fifth year quarterback, trying to get some points on the board here in the first half as his team trails 14-0. Brunel takes the snap, drops back, wants to throw, has to scramble and is dropped right about the line of scrimmage. Call it a coverage sack because, again, those defensive backs doing a great Yo, job of running step for step.
with those Georgetown wide receivers. Ronald Holmes, Omakis Langley the second team up for Delaware State to make the stop. Georgetown stops the clock with a timeout. 38, 31 seconds left in the first half. So we stay with us at halftime. For a report, Omar Bashir will be with you for the halftime report. What's going on in college football around the country? A lot of uh, yeah, George, uh, Delaware State playing a non-conference opponent today. Just about everybody in the MEAC playing a non-conference opponent these first couple weeks of the season, so we'll catch up on them. Here we go, second down and 10 from the Hornets' 47-yard line. Brunel has time, throws deep. It'll be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Cameron Creighton. Tried to throw it to Creighton's uh, left shoulder, the outside, to stay away from the defender, but just threw it way too far out of bounds. Yeah, Georgetown going vertical. They're going for their, you know, their big hitters. And, you know, really they should just be working underneath, trying to control the clock, move the chains. Six seconds went off the clock. We're down to 25 seconds left in the half, third and 10. Brunel again from the gun, near side hash mark. Takes the snap, looks right side, throwing. It will be complete at the 25-yard line and inside the 20 down to the 16-yard line. And the Hornets are lucky to have stopped him there. I thought that he was going to go the distance after making that catch. Asante Das with a first down catch. And they quickly line up at the line of scrimmage, and Brunel takes the snap and downs the ball to stop the clock. Stopping it with 11 seconds left in the quarter. Georgetown might be in field goal range, so they want to be very careful about what they do on this play. They've done a good job of taking that, taking that tight lead with their interception and putting themselves in scoring position. Brunel on second down from the 17-yard line. A little bit of pressure, throwing end zone. It will be, what's the sign? We're looking for it. Touchdown, Georgetown. The players were still on the ground fighting over the ball out of bounds before the official finally gave us the call. He wanted to see if it came out. This might be subject to review, Gary, because I'm not sure anybody had possession of that. When they went out of bounds? Right. Yeah. We'll see if we get a review on it. That's a huge swing of fortunes for Georgetown, a team that might have been down 17 uh, zip. Now it's only going to be trailing by seven if they can make this field goal. There we go. Now they're going to... We're going to get the review here. No, uh, I think it's a timeout Georgetown. Georgetown calling a timeout? Maybe they're thinking about going for two here instead of kicking the extra Timeout. Georgetown. Full timeout. One pit. Time and, and I think that Your where we shot. are here in time the quarter, out. it has to be a booth review. I don't think the coaches can ask for it. Similar to the National Football League, inside of two minutes in the half, the coach, you know, the team can't challenge. <laughs> but it doesn't look like anybody's looking at a monitor to review this play either. So the touchdown will stand. Yeah, they're going to accept it. That was just a good job. It uh, took a while to get the call from the official. The, the players, it almost looked like a simultaneous possession. They, they wrestled around, rolled out of bounds, and then finally... After a few seconds out of bounds, we got the touchdown call. Porto Banco doing a very good job of just out-battling Granger. I mean, he's, he's got him by about six inches, and he out-muscled the ball from him. Connor Hunt to attempt the extra point for Georgetown. Snap is good. The kick is up, and it is good. Four seconds left in the first half, and Georgetown pulls within seven of Delaware State. So Delaware State thought they would go in with a double-digit lead. It's a seven-point lead. Yeah, they're going to be content to just let four seconds kind of tick off the clock, go inside, and yeah. discuss what went right and what went wrong. Well, that last 11 seconds of the half is what went wrong. Great pass by the 
quarterback, Brunel. T coverage was tight right on the spot. And it was just the receiver went up, made the catch, and was able to wrestle the ball away. So credit the offense on that one, both the quarterback and the receiver. Georgetown probably going to squib this kick. They really don't want to give Delaware State an opportunity to make something happen. And, of course, the clock will not start until the ball is touched. by the receiving team. And they'll kick it short. Taken at the 18 on the right side and brought up to the 29-yard line, and that'll do it for the first half. half here as a little bit of a scrum breaks out, and the officials break that one up quickly as well. Uh, about an 11-yard return by E.J. Corr. First half done here at Delaware State University. Hornets up 14-7 over Georgetown. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN+. Plus, Putting you in HBCU, we're HSRN. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store... For many on the East Coast, it started out as a visually beautiful day. Blue skies with the sun shining brightly. But at 846, everything changed. That's when the first plane, American Airlines Flight 11, crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. 18 minutes later, another plane. United Airlines Flight 175 crashed into the South Tower one hour after the first attack. American Airlines Flight 77 slammed into the Pentagon. And after many passengers fought back, United Flight 93 crashed into the field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. In total, 19 hijackers commandeered four planes in the act of terrorism, taking the lives of 2,996 people. Today, 20 years later, we still remember. Joining us today is Delaware State head soccer coach, Courtney Rhodes. Thank you for joining us today. And if you could just please give me um, your experience that day, if you remember exactly what happened. I would say I don't have as much of a remembrance that maybe you know, somebody older like my parents um, would have. But I remember being in school. Uh, I was in gym class, and they pulled us out of gym class a bit early, which as an 11-year-old, you're kind of like, oh, man, you know, that's not, that's not normal. Um, and we shared a building with our high schoolers. So our elementary school was on the first floor and our high schoolers were always on the second floor. And we always had different scheduling. Um, so we never really got to see our high schoolers. And that day as we went through the hallway back to home homeroom, uh, you just see a bunch of high schoolers kind of hugging each other and a bit, a bit sad and some were, were crying. And it was just a, a lot of emotions that w we were just super uncertain about. Right. Um, we went back to our homeroom and kind of just super confused and our teachers were just, didn't really give us too much information. I think as a sixth grader, they were probably trying to shelter us a little bit. Um, so we just found out, hey, you know, something has happened and everyone's gonna go home and it's just an early day. And I lived about a block and a half away from my elementary school and my grandma, my grandma was living with us at the time. So my older sister and I walked back home and I just remember walking right into the front door my grandma was just blank staring, tears rolling down her face on the couch, staring at the television. I would say that's probably the most prominent memory that I have when you're young um, and, and you walk in and you see somebody who's supposed to be so stoic and, yeah. and put together, just not. Uh, that was definitely the moment that in, our, in my brain sticks out the most that, okay, something very bad happened. But yeah, it was definitely, I think as an 11 year old, you don't remember much from that time, you know, maybe skateboarding with your best friend, but um, specific days from top to bottom you don't remember, but I definitely do remember that day. Thank you so much for sharing your story. After this break, we will be joined by Mr. Sidney Sessoms. You know. And joining us now is the head director of bands for Delaware State University, Mr. Sidney Sessoms. Thank you for joining me today. As you know, today is the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Can you take me through what it was like for you that day? Well, at the time, I was teaching at 
Lincoln University of Missouri mm -hmm. in Jefferson City, Missouri. I was um, a professor of music and the band director there. And I had gone to the um, secretary's office to pick up some materials for class. And she was watching the events as they happened on her mm -hmm. little television. And I saw it and she was explaining to me what was going on and I just kind of shunned it off. I was like, oh, you know, that's, that's terrible. And I got my materials and I went back to my office as I was preparing for class and preparing for band rehearsal. And um, just went back to my office doing my thing and um, started noticing that I was the only one in the building working as all the other professors and all the other students were leaving, gathering around her television. And I noticed uh, about an hour later again that I was the only one working. It was at that point that I realized the seriousness of what was going on and I felt kind of bad. Kind of bad because I had shunned off the first attack and by this time they were showing over and over again uh, people jumping out of the buildings and people trying to be rescued and again at that point I I realized the seriousness of what was going on and realized that America was in trouble. Right. And again, then by that time, you know, then there was a third attack. And so kind of horrifying day at that yeah. point that I realized it. Right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience. After the break, joining us will be Mr. Philip Holmes, the executive director of housing and residential education here at Delaware State University. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can be recycled into other stuff. Well, I want my wrapper. We're back. And with us now is Mr. Philip Holmes, the executive director of housing and residential education here at Delaware State. We've been talking with people from Delaware State about their memories from 20 years ago during the attacks. Please tell me about your day that day and what was your day like? Well, um, I do have vivid memories of that day. Mm -hmm. um, I was in my office. Uh, I was working at a previous um, institute of higher learning mm -hmm. in Illinois. And um, I was in my office just working like any other normal day. Um, when I was kind of interrupted by um, a student running down the hall saying that a plane had hit the World Trade Tower. And that was definitely out of the ordinary, but I did think there was just maybe a Cessna or something small. Um, I kind of shook it off and said, you know, said a little prayer for the people involved. Um, it was at that point, um, the same student who had left my office comes running back and saying, another plane hit the other tower. We were just kind of glued to the television and only to see that there were other planes involved as well. Um, but just my heart went out to the people that were lost, um, the, the brave um, fire people that were running towards the problem instead of away. Um, it was just a big impact on everybody at the time. Right. When we talked earlier, you told me about your father, how he was the police chief in a small town near Pittsburgh. Could you tell me what that was like for you? Father was police chief of our town named Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Um, we were about 20 minutes from Pittsburgh. Um, mm -hmm. I myself was in Illinois when it happened, but one of my vivid memories of that time was him trying to call me, making sure not only was uh, the city safe, but also um, I was safe as well, being right. the son, you know. Um, to see him at a heightened alert, uh, knowing that a plane did go down in Pennsylvania, um, and he didn't know if the next plane was heading towards Pittsburgh, for all he knew. Um, so to see how the policemen uh, were so brave and making sure that everybody was okay and locking down the city was uh, really something to see. Thank you for sharing your story. When we return, we'll be back with the second half of the game. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can be recycled in the Better union, they're a little sharper, probably a little bit more knowledgeable about uh, the, 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 the schemes and, and their plays and you know, I think that's where Georgetown really is lacking in. Just they don't have that team continuity or that team uh, cohesiveness uh, that you need, that you develop uh, when you get a lot of reps in. 
The official sponsors of HSRN are American Spirit, Federal Credit Union, Symphony Potato Chips, Fred Drake Automotive, B2, L29, Premium Alkaline Water, America's Mortgage Coach John Millett, and the Alley Group Insurance. As we're ready for the second half to get underway, Hornets to kick off to Georgetown. So the Hoyas ended the first half with the ball. They'll start the second half with the ball. Kickoff taken at the 8-yard line, brought up the right side, and a good wrap-up right around the 22-yard line on the return man, Joshua Tomas. All right, uh, let's, let's check that, and that's uh, Jonathan Sadler on the return. Sadler played in only six games in 2019 for Georgetown. So he's starting off the season with game participation here. Again, they did not play in 2019. Delaware State got into five games in the spring, one of only three MEAC teams to choose to play. Georgetown didn't play football, but they did play basketball last season. That's the bread and butter sport there. Always has been, probably always will be. Joseph Brunel. Fifth-year quarterback from the shotgun to take the snap, and he took too much time. Going to have a delay of game step off of five yards against Georgetown. Where did they did they call a timeout? I can't hear you. Time they out. got a timeout in. Or wait. Before the delay of game, we had timeout. Georgetown, their first charge timeout. Wow. Mike Walker, first play from scrimmage, second half, they burn one of three timeouts. You know, and you figure the whole halftime speech, right, that <laughs> part of that is talking about the very first play we're <laughs> going to run from scrimmage. And You'd think. <laughs> they get a delay game, a potential delay game, so have to burn a timeout. And that just speaks to the rustiness of not only just the players, but the coaches and how they interact with the players as well. And sometime in the fourth quarter, you suspect they might wish they had that. There's, so here they go. The ball gets set back to the 23-yard line. They got the timeout just before the whistle blew for the delay. The give is to the fullback who charges ahead for two yards to the 25-yard line. That's Stately on the carry. Played in two game, nine games back in 2019. He started one of those games, and he led the team in rushing with 404 yards on 76 carries. Stately had two touchdowns in that season. Back to action here. They try to run around the right side, and the Hornets are there to make the stop after uh, a gain of about a yard on the carry. Stakely again on the carry. Up to the 26, third down and seven. Defensive line played very well as a unit on that last play, kind of just squeezing the ball carrier into a real narrow hole and allowing linebackers to come up. Overall, this score. Delaware State defense showing the effects of that five-game short season back February through May when they had a game and then a couple of weeks off and a game a couple of weeks off. But they got that time on the field. Here's Brunel throwing deep. They got that time on the field. Here's Brunel throwing deep and just cannot get it to his man, who's downfield. Good coverage on the play for Delaware State, trying to get it to Cameron Creighton. And on the coverage, it was Ryan Clemens, step for step, fourth down and seven, Georgetown to punt. Good series for Delaware State University's defense, Gary. Uh, again, uh, with any type of a return, Peeler should be able to get this ball on the other side of the 50, which again would put Delaware State University in pretty good field position. Charles Peeler standing at his 39-yard line. He had uh, one punt return in the first half of 13 yards. He has breakaway potential. He's going to have to backpedal on this one back to the 23. 
Now he'll start forward, a little bit of an opening, and then taken down at the 30. Not bad field position, starting from your 30-yard line. First possession of the second half. Just a good punch by punt by Georgetown, driving Delaware State back deeper, not necessarily deep, but deeper on their side. And on the, the exchange of the ball, we have a timeout. 13:31 left in the third quarter. We'll take the timeout as well. You're watching MIAC football on ESPN Plus, putting the U and HBCU. We're HSRN. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can half passing for Tyleek Bethea. See what he's able to do here in the second half. Has a touchdown pass and an interception in the game. And he'll give it to Savion Wilkerson, who crashes outside the right tackle, picks up about four yards, maybe five, to the 35-yard line. He runs into a whole bunch of white jerseys and pushed them back about a yard before they took him down. This is a very important play in this drive for Delaware State University because too often they get very good uh, yardage on first down but have an incomplete pass or will lose yards on the second down, running the ball. So got to get positive yards so they have a third and short situation as opposed to a third and long. You know, that's the Hornets we've seen past seasons. Let's see if they can do things differently here in 2021 as they want to contend for that MEAC title. Even though they were picked to finish fourth in the conference, they want to say we can do better than that. And it looks like they uh, might have taken too much time on that play. We have a flag and a whistle. And a step off against Delaware State. And here's Full what you talked about, Mike. Offense. Number 84. Number 84. Five yards. Yard. Still second down. down. You get good five yards on first down, and then you back yourself up and get second and ten. Back to the 30-yard line where they started this drive. Bethea with Wilkerson in the backfield. Receivers split out wide on each side. They shift the tight ends to the right side. And that will be the give to Wilkerson outside right tackle. He gets it out to the 33, maybe to the 34. We'll see where they end up putting it down. So instead of second and five, it's third and six for Delaware State. Another third and long situation for Dell State. You know, and again, that you know the team hasn't really proven that they're very efficient at getting these third and long. So you really just try to create situations. Puts it in the air. Drops back, wants to throw, looks down, looks down, looks down, into the middle. Almost took the official out on that one. The umpire had to make a spin move or it would have cut him right in half. Umpire uh, Mike Fedelofic. That ball was heading straight for him uh, and it had a rope. It's incomplete. Fourth down. Jake Burdell punting in the first half. And uh, sorry, Matt Knoll punting in the first half three times. Averaged 32 yards per punt. Good snap. They set up for the return. He got a nice high kick over toward the sideline. It'll be taken at the 27. It's Joshua Tomas on the return. He got hit as he crossed the 30 yard line, spun away, and picked up some extra yardage. They'll put it down on the 34-yard line. Good hang time on that punt. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the... Georgetown ball right here. First and 10, their own 34-yard line. Fake the handoff. Brunel rolls right side, completes the pass out to the 50-yard line. Rolled out of bounds right about that area. It's Joshua Tomas, who's having a good afternoon catching passes for the Georgetown Hoyas. Big pickup on that play. Nice pass by Brunel on the scramble. Uh, put it right where his receiver needed that ball. And Again, they're moving the chains. Nice control pass for Georgetown. Just slightly across midfield to the Delaware State 49-yard line. Georgetown wearing the white uniforms, bright white uniforms here on this sunny afternoon. They'll hand it off to the fullback. Moultrie spins his way ahead for a yard to the 48-yard line. 
Pick up of only a yard, second and nine. Good interior play by the trenches of Delaware State University. They're doing a good job of getting off the blocks, but also filling those gaps. And I like the, the aggressiveness of that linebacker core on the backs of that defensive line. Nice size crowd here at Delaware State University this afternoon in the great weather. Hand off again to the fullback. This time it's Jackson, Jackson Soffold, and he forces his way up to the 45 before he's brought down. So it'll be third down and six for Georgetown. And this is where Brunel gets dangerous because he can throw the short pass, he can throw the long one, he can scramble, he can run. Yeah, he's a, triple, he's a double threat in terms of running and, and, and passing the ball, and uh, he makes good decisions too. Uh, so it's a third and long. If you're Dell State, you got to try to keep everything in front of you. Don't let anything get behind you. And Coached you, well in high school by a 19-year-old, a 19-year NFL veteran, his father. So he knows his position. He knows what to do. He knows how to think. Low snap. Bends down. Takes it. Throws the out pass on the left side. It's going to be complete and maybe a first down as Herman Moultrie took the pass on the side and cut it to the outside. Hornets tried to make the tackle. He slipped away and indeed got the first down to the Delaware State 36-yard line. Ronald Holmes just couldn't run step for step with him on that play. Moultrie hit him with a little juke, juke move, and that gave him the angle on the corner uh, to pick up the first down. Then he danced the sideline to pick up the extra yardage. So Georgetown gets the first down. Moultrie comes in motion to the far side. Fake handoff. Brunel throwing downfield. End zone. Touchdown. Cameron Creighton on the reception. 36 yards for Georgetown. Charles Peel on the coverage for Delaware State University. Look like he got beat uh, pretty much off the uh, snap of the ball. The way he's looking around, he thinks there might have been a blown coverage. Like he was looking for help over top maybe. Well, something didn't happen that should have for Delaware State. That's the long touchdown pass. And it'll be Connor Hunt, the place kicker, to try to even this game up at 14. And he does. 9-13 remaining here in the third quarter, and Georgetown has just tied the game on a 36-yard touchdown. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can be received. Of the first half and the second possession of the second half gets Georgetown tied up in this game at 14 with 9.13 left in the third quarter. Delaware State going to try to take back the lead here on this possession. Davis Walker to kick off. Nice end over end kick that will be taken down about the five yard line by Charles Peeler. Peeler brings it right up the right side, just outside the hash mark, far side hash mark, and dives forward to the 22 yard line. Again, a little bit of uh, exchange of pleasantries after this play. Away from the ball. And the officials quickly breaking that up. They kept good control of this game. Yeah, there haven't been a whole lot of emotional flare-ups of guys doing dumb things because they're overexcited. It's basically been played uh, from whistle to whistle. So for Delaware State University, Gary, it's a very pivotal drive in this game. Mm -hmm. They allowed a 14-point lead to evaporate. They got to show that they can literally keep their foot on the gas and keep putting points on the board. And Bethea goes under center on first down. They try to run through the middle and... Savion Wilkerson couldn't find anything in the middle. They stacked that up on him. So he bounced to the outside and got back to the line of scrimmage. May have even lost a yard on the play. That might have been Chris Ike because I think it's a 22-23 yep. thing. You're right. Michael Chris Ike on the carry. His second of the game. And he just uh, couldn't find anything in that middle. They were not able to even give him an inch to run through. Tried to bounce at the outside and make something happen, but lost the yard. Second and 11. Now Bethea goes back to the shotgun. It's the first time we've seen him go under center this year. May not go back under again for a while. Now it's Wilkerson outside the left tackle and takes it up to the 29-yard line. Nice hole open there on the outside, and he hits it quickly. Makes things happen. 
So after a short loss on the first play, they pick up some decent yards on the second. Now it's a third and short situation. So you have Tyleek Bethea, who's shown uh, the ability to throw the ball uh, today. I think we want to get him in that run-pass option, yeah. too, because he's a great runner, especially in that open uh, flank or open field area. Hornets have to call a timeout here. They wanted to make a Come late out. substitution Jello coming up on third down and three after Wilkerson's uh, eight-yard run. So they have to, to burn the timeout to make seconds. sure they have timeout. the right personnel on the field. 7.56 left in the third quarter. They're going to do that. And in the meantime, we'll take the break as well. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN+. Plus. This is not going to be the full timeout. Game also here on HSRN, online, on the app, and again this week on Sirius XM. Glad you're with us, however you're with us. On third and three, Bethea rolling right side, looking downfield, complete and a first down as he simply goes on a swing pass to the outside, Savion Wilkerson out of the backfield. But wait a minute, we have a penalty marker down at the 35-yard line. I don't think they're going to call a pick play, but they just might on this. Nobody was out there near Wilkerson, but they're going to step off yardage against Delaware State here. Pass to the fair. Off it. Offensive, Still offensive pass interference. That's a 10-yard, 15-yard penalty. The and that'll put the ball back to the Delaware State 14-yard line. Still third down, but a long way to go. They set it with the ball, tip of the ball right at the 15. So it's going to bring up a third down and 17 for Delaware State. Deep in their own territory now, inside their own 20 at the 15-yard line. And they flood both sides with receivers. Back in the backfield with Bethea. He's in there to block. Bethea rolling to the right side. Now he's going to pull it down and get rid of it. Dumped it off out of bounds. Threw it away. Brings up fourth no down. Delaware Jackson State Royalty. will have to punt. The quarterback was outside of the tackle box. Nobody the open there for Kylie Buffet on that one. Yeah, the whole dynamic of the series changed with that penalty. It went from third and a, and a possible short to a third. And like I said, punting team get ready. Not too many plays designed to pick up 15, 16 yards. And Tyleek Buffet did the right thing. Didn't like what he saw. Threw it away. Good choice on that play by Bethea. He didn't take the loss, which would have hurt even more. And now Georgetown with an opportunity to get pretty good field position here. They set up for the return. It's a short kick. It Fair catch called for and made. And let's see where they're going to say it is. The Delaware State 37-yard line. That was a high kick with that backward end over end. If he hadn't caught that ball... It might have even been worse for the Hornets because that's the kind of ball that will take the back jump on you. Well, look on the bright side. It did get past the first down marker. So yes. <laughs> yeah, the punter at least picked up a first down, but not the field position Delaware State wanted Georgetown starting uh, this drive after scoring on their last one. Now it's a test for the defense. They have one turnover today, an interception. Let's see what they're able to do here. Last week they had about... What was it? Five, six turnovers. They run to the right side and pick up two yards inside the 35 to the 34. Stakely on the carry for Georgetown. Stakely didn't get too many opportunities to run the ball in the first half, but uh, he's been kind of uh, called on a lot here in this third quarter. That defense has done a good job all day of stopping the run. They have been susceptible to the pass, though. And that's where Georgetown has made their game, setting up the pass or throwing the touchdown pass. On second down and eight, fake pass to the left side. They go downfield. It's incomplete, intended for Sergio Portobanco. Coverage was down there with Portobanco, but the ball was thrown well. The coverage man couldn't get to it, but Portobanco had to kind of turn his body at the last minute, and he couldn't pull it in. So that's going to create a third and long 
with Georgetown, which is exactly what this defense wants. They have to stop uh, Georgetown from picking up a first down. They can't allow this possession to continue. They tried misdirection on that with an end around and then a pass, fake the pass over to the side, and then they went downfield with it. But it's third and eight. Joseph Brunel, near side hash mark. Snap, drops back. Pressure coming, has to dump it off and got rid of it. Now that ball did not even get to the back to the line of scrimmage. Could that be grounding? There it is. Intentional grounding. Ball never got back even close to the line of scrimmage. Here's the call. Intentional grounding. Offense. Number eight. Yeah, it's penalty beast. It's penalty has it despite the foul. Also results in the loss of down. Fourth down. Good call by the official. I liked it. He agreed with me. <laughs> Put the ball on the 50-yard line, and now Georgetown will have to punt. Delaware State looking for a good return here to try to get some field position to work from. But 628 left in the third quarter. We're tied at 14 here at Delaware State. Defense showed up for Delaware State University. Well, in this possession, the offense has to do the same. It can't be a three and out. They have to actually come away with some points on their next possession. I'd like to see uh, the special teams show up big here. This one will be an end over end kick. Fair catch called for and made at the Hornets 11 yard line by Charles Peeler. So they don't get real good field position out of it. They've got to go 89 yards to put points on the board here in the third quarter. Score remains tied at 14, 621 left to play. And this Hornet, Hornets trying to get the offense on track in the third quarter. They did well in the first quarter, did fairly well in the second quarter. Both touchdowns for Delaware State came in the second period, but then they gave up two. One in the first, second quarter and one early here in the third quarter. Now Tyleek Bethea, who went 10 of 15 passing in the first half, will hand off on first down. And Wilkerson tests the middle. I believe it's Wilkerson. We'll see as they unstack. It was Savion Wilkerson. And uh, he got hit by a whole bunch of people coming into the middle. Picked up three to the 14-yard line, second and seven. Thea has, on the short side of the field, one receiver split. Wilkerson trying to go around the right side. Turns it upfield and won't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Has good pursuit there. That offensive line unable to keep Georgetown from penetrating there. And that'll be a loss of yardage for Wilkerson. The pursuit by Georgetown forces Wilkerson to continuously bounce that ball outside. That just allows other defenders to come up and provide uh, some pursuit deep. And, you know, Delaware State University, they got to get a little bit more flexible in their formations. Put some uh, flip to, some motion, some shift to, to see if they can get Georgetown, catch them sleeping, uh, and maybe get somebody wide open just on lineup alone. That play lost a yard, third down and eight. Wilkerson, the lone back in the backfield. Two receivers split out left side, one on the right, quick out. And complete, but uh, it's going to be way short of the first down, about six yards short on that completion for Delaware State. Just a very conservative possession for Delaware State University. Two runs, yep. one pass, no first down, punting the ball, three and out after the defense just did an excellent job of getting the ball back from Georgetown. Was that Woodley made the catch, but absolutely nowhere to run to. He had white jerseys all around him when he made the catch. Matt Knoll to punt, standing at his own two to take the snap. Hornets get the 11th man on the field right now. He goes to the right side on the outside as a blocker. Here's Knoll. Plenty of time. Penalty marker flies. Knoll. As a blocker. Here's Knoll. Plenty of time. Penalty marker flies. Noel, again a short kick. This one bounces, rolls across midfield, and dies at the 46-yard line of Georgetown. But hold on. We have a penalty marker back around the line of scrimmage. And this might be a procedure call on Delaware State. 
At least I think that's the early signal I get. Saw the linesman make, and that's who threw the flag. Illegal formation. Kicking team. That pin is declined. First down. Okay. Illegal formation by the punting team, and the penalty declined by Georgetown. They'll start. This is good field position for the Hoyas at their own 46-yard line. Illegal formation. That's just a lining up situation. So somebody either didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage or someone's just not in position. That shouldn't happen. Not at all. Not, not by this point in the season. Brunel fakes the handoff. He'll carry it forward across the 50-yard line, pushes his way down to about the 48 of Delaware State. Joseph Brunel on the carry. Doesn't carry the ball often, but is effective when he does because he's such a threat to throw. Played in eight games back in 2019. He hands off here on second down and tripped up coming through the line of scrimmage, getting back to the line. It's Herman Moultrie. No gain on the play. Call it third down and four. Tackled by the turf on that play. Mm -hmm. The leading tackle of Fort Delaware State University for the past decade. No matter what the surface is made of, it'll get you. Now Brunel on third and four. Takes the snap from the gun. Quick throw to the outside complete. Going to have to see where they're going to mark the forward progress after the catch by Asante Das. And it's going to be a first down for Georgetown as they'll mark it complete and out of bounds at the Delaware State 42. Das doing a good job of selling the go route on Guthrie, who bailed out, did not wanting to get beat, and he just broke it off early and picked up an easy catch for a first down. Yep, cut it to the outside, and Brunel made the pass to that. Fake the handoff. Brunel again keeps it. Can't find anybody to throw to. He gets horse collared and taken out of bounds. That's a good wrap up by Brooks Parker. That's a dangerous man, uh, Brooks Parker, to run to his side. You better make sure you have your Obamacare policy up to date because he brings the wood. And you've seen how he just tackled Brunel. Up it looked high. more like an Olympic event than a football tackle. The quarterback throw. <laughs> For a loss of a yard. Second and 11. Brunel may think about running in Brooks Parker's area again as he'll want to throw on this one. Nope, he's going to take it through the middle, and he is going to be, this will be a sack as he loses yardage back to the 46-yard line of Delaware State. That's another three yards lost to make it third and 14. Defense again just showing up big for Delaware State University. They're just keeping this, this Hornet team in the game, and right now the advantage in this game belongs to Del State primarily because of the defensive side of the ball. Isaiah Williams credited with the sack, or at least part of it. There are a bunch of red jerseys in there. Brunel drops the snap, picks it up, runs in the backfield, throwing downfield complete to Asante Das. Looks like he'll be taken down about the 38-yard of Delaware State, and that brings up fourth down and uh, about six yards to go for Georgetown. And the punting team comes onto the field. Connor Hunt sets up at his own 46 yard line to take the snap here. Do they actually go ahead and kick the ball? Nope. Now he, he thought about passing, held the ball like he was going to. This ball bounces inside the Delaware State five yard line and then kicks back and will be downed by Georgetown at the Hornets' six. Effective punt. Screwed up the coverage by faking the, uh, the pass and then kicking it and put it down inside the 10-yard line where he wanted to make it happen. Good punt by Connor Hunt. 36 seconds left here in the third quarter. We are still tied at 14, Gary Lang, along with Mike Walker. Sure good to see you today, Walk. Gary, it's good to be here at my alma mater, uh, watching what I believe is a, a program that has turned the corner and, uh, on improving, and right now they got their backs to the wall. Let's see what they're able to do.
trying in the middle, and nothing has been happening there today. Whether Savion Wilkerson or Michael Chris Ike has carried the ball, they have not been able to clear out that middle. No, nah, no, nah. Georgetown's done a pretty good job of establishing they're not going to give anything up between the tackles. So if you University, you really may want to look like you're attacking that area, but you have to have your play action and you have to have your bounce in the run game to attack those flats. They made it a one-yard gain. So when we come back with the fourth quarter, 15 minutes still to go here in Dover, Delaware, at Delaware State University, the Hornets will have a second down and nine. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN. It just kind of you know falls off of his back, and he focuses on the next play. So it comes down to these 15 minutes now. The last time we had overtime with Delaware State was last May. They went to overtime in the fifth game of the season, that last game at home against South Carolina State. Hornets throwing, and it's going to be incomplete. Looked like uh, the intended receiver was Roman Davis, and he might have pulled up a little bit. Uh, he looked like... Uh, he either just didn't catch one of his steps right, and it, it threw off his, his stride, and he was not able to get to the ball. That could have been the case, but, you know, Delaware State, again, short gain on the first play, incomplete pass on the second. Now you're facing a third and long, right, with your end zone literally on the back part of your jersey. You know, they, this is a play they got to make. They can't keep turning the ball back over to the defense and expect them to win the game. And and give it to Georgetown with good field position. Third down and nine here from the 12. Handoff, draw play, run outside the right tackle. It's Wilkerson, and Wilkerson gets the first down. That's a great run. They, they opened it up on that right side outside the tackle. Wilkerson took it to the 17 first down Hornets. What an explosive run by him, and that's what they needed. You know, every now and then you need somebody to step up and, and you'll know, take the responsibility on their own shoulders, and he did that on that play. So on first down, they'll give it, fake the handoff to Wilkerson. Here's Bethea on the run himself, takes it to the outside, and then dances up the far sideline. He got nice yardage on that carry. He, we've always known he has the running ability. We've been waiting for him to develop the passing game. He's got all he's got the tools. First down. He's got the height. He's got the weight. He's got the strength. He's a smart kid. I just think it's a matter of reps and his confidence. He just has to keep building on his confidence. Because uh, the more confident he gets, it's going to rub off on the team. They're going to be more confident. And Bethea took it out to the 28-yard line. First down there for Delaware State. Bethea takes the snap, looks, pressure coming. Had to throw that one away as coming right up the middle on a blitz was that linebacker, defensive end, Quincy Chinwuko. Didn't have much time to set up. Had to get rid of that one. Bethea gets up with a little limp in his gait right now. But he's times, still in the game. How many times did you come off the field and not have a little limp? Man, you, you just get battered out there. Even, even when you don't run the ball, you're going to get hit a lot. They throw, complete Trey Gross on the near sideline, knocked out of bounds at the 32. That's going to get him three yards to make it third down and seven. It's a, it's only a three-yard pickup with the ball, you know, because Trey Gross is the furthest receiver to the right side. If he does a two or three yard out, that ball's got to travel some 20, 25 yards just to pick up three yards. Yeah, we talk about the, the the linear distance, but not about uh, the, the north-south. We, we think in terms of east-west as the field gets oriented. Right. But that is a long pass, and it gives the coverage team time to get over there, and, and even if they've blown coverage. Here's Bethea scrambling in the backfield, throwing. It is caught through defenders. Trey Gross somehow tracked that ball through two defenders, one who missed the pick, and makes the catch and goes out of bounds 
at the Georgetown 46-yard line. Looked like Delano Salgado from Georgetown had a beat on the ball. Looked like he was going to go for the interception. And that was a little bit stronger than he anticipated. Somehow that ball did get to Trey Gross, and he caught it, did what he needed to do, first down for Dell State. All right. He was knocked out at the 49 of Georgetown. Hornets moving the ball here. That's three first downs on this drive. Wilkerson through the middle. Puts his way ahead down and picks up a couple of yards. Now to the 46. That's three yards, second and seven. One of these weeks, we're going to see Savion Wilkerson have a 100-yard game. It's there. I think once he gets familiar and comfortable with that offensive line and how they block and how long they can sustain their blocks, and he'll get to read those tails a little bit better, and he'll be hitting those holes, picking up five or six yards where he's picking up three and four right now. Fake the handoff to Wilkerson. Bethea sidearms it and completes it. It's not going to be a first down, but the tight end, Miles Morales, with his third catch of the afternoon. To the Georgetown, 43, 42. Third down and three. You know, you can ding Doik and, and do those short passes and, and uh, really beat up a defense and eat up some clock. Yeah, and you know, you got playmakers. So the only thing that has to happen is one of your playmakers has to elude one tackle or break one tackle, and they're going to pick up big yards on the play. Big third down here for Delaware State. They shift on the line, move me people over to the left side. Now they're going to try the big man into the middle, and nothing happening there as Michael Chris Ike got the call. That looked like Thomas Houdon. Yeah, Th uh, Thomas Bertrand Houdon lost a yard on the play. Yeah, they just got beat up front. Georgetown did a wow. great job of just beating Del Delaware State offensive line. And I'm one of those guys, when somebody gets tackled for a loss, I like to see how many offensive linemen are standing up. And if I see a whole bunch of offensive linemen standing up, I realize they got beat pretty badly on that play. And there's a lot of guys standing up. Matt Knoll gets called on again here with fourth down and three to punt. He wants to get this one inside the 10, but not into the end zone. Almost got it. And they got Knoll. We'll have roughing the punter as the ball goes into the end zone. But they knock Knoll down after the punt. And he played it well, too. He stayed on the ground for a while to make sure that the officials knew. And we got the flag and the roughing the punter. And that will give Delaware State the ball back. But Dell State, it doesn't matter how you get your first downs. You just got to get them. <laughs> yeah. You got to keep that offense on the field. You got to get closer to the red the zone. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Running I'm into sorry. the kicker, five-yard penalty, down. that'll give the Hornets a first down. It's the difference between roughing the kicker and running into the kicker in how much yardage is assessed. Running into the kicker is five yards, but the Hornets had fourth and three, so that's going to be a first down. And the official corrects his uh, He got himself, call. yeah, he got himself. Move it to the 37-yard line. Georgetown. Hornets in Hoyas territory. Need to keep this drive alive. 10 minutes, 29 seconds left in the game in regulation. Bethea from the shotgun on the far side hash mark. Takes it, gives it to Wilkerson, finds a little bit of room on the right side. Follows that tackle across the 35 to the 34. Not a bad pickup running into the strength of that Georgetown defense. Again, they're really good inside the tackles. They really haven't allowed Delaware State University a whole lot of yards inside. Most of the running games for positive yards has occurred outside the tackles. Uh, Savion Wilkerson, the MEAC Offensive Player of the Week and Rookie of the Week last week. As the Hornets took all the honors in the MEAC in that win over Bowie State. Wilkerson, 26 carries, 92 yards, three touchdowns last Saturday. Bethea on second down and seven. Eludes one tackler in the backfield. Goes to the right side. Tries to dump it off. Threw it over Wilkerson's head. Chose not to run with the ball. We have a penalty marker down at the 30-yard line. Let's see what this one's about. That's uh, four yards past the line of scrimmage. An eligible man downfield. Number 65, 68. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second you know, if, Bethea, if Bethea had run with the ball, 
wouldn't have been an issue. But as soon as he threw it, then you had the ineligible receiver downfield. Not sure what Matthew Dirks was even doing down on, on the other side of the line of scrimmage. He should be back there pass block. Push it, pushing his man back. Field dumps it off to him, and a line a defensive back comes through and breaks it up. Justin Fontenot, I'm sorry, he's a linebacker. He blew that play up. There was a blocker there, and he never saw Fontenot come through. And Fontenot just nailed Wilkerson for about a uh, four-yard loss. Yeah, that's Matthew Dirks, same guy who got hit with the uh, penalty about being illegally downfield. Just doesn't get his head around fast enough, Gary. And he's got to be looking downfield knowing that that's where the uh, defenders are going to come from. Dirk's a veteran player. I mean, he's he's here for that extra season. He was drafted by the Ottawa Red Blacks of the CFL and decided he was going to stay here at Delaware State for another season. The Red, Backs, uh, Red Blacks keep his, uh, his uh, rights. Fumble by Delaware State as Patheo was caught in the backfield. The ball came out. And it's going to be Georgetown football at the Delaware at their own 48-yard line. A Georgetown player looked like he might have twisted around and, and got injured on the play. And it looks like it could be a knee on the injured player for Georgetown. But it's a turnover by Delaware State. Bethea tried to twist around as he was being hit and got, just got twisted around. And the ball came out of his hand. He couldn't get it. Georgetown dove on it. The previous play is under review. Going to review that and see if maybe he was in the grasp and, and or was down when the ball came out. They're going to be a review of the play, but Thea got up slowly as well. We were talking about Matthew Dirks, though. Drafted uh, back in May by the uh, Ottawa Red Blacks of the Canadian Football League. He wanted to finish his graduate studi studies at Delaware State, so he said, hold on, Ottawa, I'll be there next year because they keep his rights now that they drafted him and he wanted to play another season here at Delaware State. That offensive line in 2019, nine games in that season of 100-plus yards rushing, seven of them in a row. The line was ranked fourth in the MEAC. They were looking for Matthew Dirks for leadership senior experience. After we're going to take a quick time out here. A fumble. You're watching me at football on ESPN+. Plus. Hoya's ball as we come back here, and now the officials hold things up as they weren't quite ready for play to begin again. We come back now, 8.47 left in the fourth quarter. Georgetown ball at their own 48-yard line. After the turnover, the review showed fumble by Delaware State. And they'll give the ball on the carry to Joshua Stakely. Stakely right into the middle, up to the 50-yard line. Nice pickup of two yards, but uh, if you do that three times, you're punting. I think Georgetown, you know, obviously they want to be aggressive and want to put points on the board, but they understand the situation. They're in the driver's seat right now. They literally just want to hold possession of the clock, get in scoring range, and come away with a minimum field goal. And here is Brunel rolling right side, looking downfield. Can't find anybody open. Finally unloads, and it's going to be incomplete on the far sideline. He got it out there to Cameron Creighton. But Creighton was hit immediately and knocked out of bounds before he could get a foot down. Incomplete pass, third down and eight at the 50. The preview. Review. They're going to look at that one again and see if maybe Creighton came down inbound. So we'll have a, a booth review of that or an on-field review of that last play. Need a mortgage? Call America's mortgage coach John Millett at 1-866-409-9000. Got a couple quarterbacks up warming up right now. Some yeah. of the reserves. Hornets go on the road next week. Down to Johnson City, Tennessee. 
be the first time ever against East Tennessee State. It's a two-year contract. The Buccaneers will come here to play next year, but we get a road trip next week down to Tennessee. Not far from the North Carolina-Tennessee border. Not far from the Virginia-Tennessee border either. Not far into Tennessee, but we'll be there. Game is at 7.30 next Saturday night here on HSRN. And our HSRN.com, HSRN app at 7.30 next Saturday night. We hope you'll be with us for it. Nothing like nighttime football. Coach Milstead told me he loves nighttime football. He prefers it. Something about being underneath those lights, boy, I tell you. Makes it special. Makes it easier to call a game, too. Sometimes uh, the glare of the sun off of uniforms and helmets and makes it difficult. But uh, at night, everything seems to be cleaner and crisper. After... The ruling... It's an incomplete pass. Okay. The ruling on the field stands after the replay review, and the officials say it is an incomplete pass. So Georgetown will have a third down and eight. Does Georgetown lose a timeout? Did they request that, or is that something that the officials determined to review? Uh, let's see. I'm looking at the scoreboard to see if I can see what the situation is with timeouts, Mark, there. Brunel throwing downfield. Complete first down at the Delaware State 25-yard line. As he got it down to Cameron Creighton, he got in between two defenders, and Brunel delivered the ball right on the spot. Just a perfectly thrown ball into a wide open wide receiver. Didn't see who was actually supposed to be covering him on that play. When he caught the ball, it seems like he fell down actually even before he got hit. I'm not sure if, if Georgetown got assessed or, or loses a timeout on that. But they got the first down anyway here at the 24 of Dell State. Brunel trying to get his team into the end zone, get the lead. Throws the quick out pass on the left side, complete to Stakely, and that's going to lose yardage back to the 29-yard line. Hornets right there to make the play. Huge loss on that play. Great job in coverage by Kamari Jackson. Again, he's just a hitter. Got an instinct for the ball, too, and when he wraps you up, you're going down. Five-yard loss, second and 15. Brunel has two receivers split out wide on the right side. He'll hand off and slipping at the 30-yard line, managing to get back to the line of scrimmage on a running play. That one was Stakely. Third down and 15. Kamari Jackson on the tackle again. So this whole series, Stakely and uh, Jackson. Big play here on third down for the defense. From the Hornets' 29-yard line. They're showing blitz. Brunel. They do blitz, and Brunel gets his. He throws it. Intercepted by Delaware State. To the 25-yard line, and across the 25-yard line, they made Brunel hurry that one. He got hit as he threw, and the interception was made by Delaware State. Guthrie on the pick. That's just a case of Brunel going to the well one too many times. He wanted to target Cameron Creighton again. Hold on. We have a penalty marker down. It looks like it's going to be against the Hornets. It'll still be third down. The referee's microphone keeps breaking up, so I wasn't able to pick up exactly what the penalty was. Five-yard step off to the 24-yard line to make it third and ten. Erase the Guthrie interception. It's still Georgetown ball. Right. 6-16 left in the quarter. Whatever the penalty is, you classify it under lack of discipline. Yeah. At this moment in the game, can't be jumping off sides, can't be encroaching, can't do anything. Timeout was called there. Timeout. Time Georgetown. Yeah, second charge. Timeout. Boy, it. Taking their second time out of the half. That'll leave them with one with 6.14 still to play. Remember, they took one early in the second half. And we said maybe coming down the line they'll wish they had that. We'll see. 
but they took it uh, within the first, what, 20 seconds of the second half, they had to take one. So the short timeout here, well, it is not a short timeout. It's a long one. We're going to grab this one as well. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN+. Plus, Putting to you an HBCU, we're HSRN. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can be recycled enough. With a mistake, gave five yards back to Georgetown. The snap to Brunel, the draw play. Through the middle, and it's going to be still short of the first down, but that one was dangerous. He just needed another step to break that. Joshua Stakely almost had six. Tripped up as he came through. Stopped at the 17-yard line, fourth down, and three for Georgetown, and they'll send out their field goal unit. Connor Hunt to attempt a 35-yard field goal here for Georgetown to break the tie. Kicking east to west from the near side hash mark. Waiting for the snap. It's good snap. The kick on its way. No good. Pulled it wide left. And the Hornets defense has done its job. Helped out by Connor Hunt missing that field goal. Bend but don't break. Again, doing a good job, Gary, of keeping him kind of outside the red zone and forcing was what appears to be a long kick for Georgetown. And, you know, Dell State ducked a bullet. The offense gets an opportunity now to pretty much maintain control of the clock, possession of the ball, Gary, and make it just win this game with a field goal. And with a, the exchange of the ball, we have a break in the action here. We'll take this time out. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN+. Plus. Putting the U in HBCU, we're HSRN. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can be recycled into other stuff. Well, I want my wrapper to be a hangler! How about a park bench? Dad, you need to think bigger. Recycle your specially marked Crunchy Bar wrappers in store now. explored all kinds of places, like Couch Cove. Book an American Airlines flight on AA.com using your MasterCard so you can plan your next adventure and start something priceless. Game. Bethea QB. on the handoff. Wilkerson takes it to the left side, has an opening across the 35, 40, 45 yard line. Savion Wilkerson with the bust out that we've been waiting for. Nice run by Savion Wilkinson. And we got a new quarterback in, too. It's like Jared Lewis is back in, Gary. Jared Lewis, who took him most of the way after the first half in uh, February when Tyleek Bethea got injured. Jared Lewis came in and quarterbacked the team the rest of the way through the season. And did a pretty good job. It was a quarterback battle in training camp to see who was going to get the job. Jared Lewis, in the spring, played all five games had a passer rating of 117.79 in the spring went 43 of 84 passing that was almost 52 percent five interceptions seven touchdowns so he is capable averaged 102 yards passing per game ran the ball well 81 carries 212 19 net yards scored two touchdowns he's an explosive runner i see he's got a knee brace on so obviously there's still something wrong with that knee but he brings that dimension to the game that I think Tyleek Bethea doesn't really possess, and that's his ability to just instinctively run. Javid Lewis is a good runner. Big defensive liner Kwame Achampong injured on that play for Georgetown. He goes to the sideline gingerly. And Wilkerson got the ball out to the Hornets' 46-yard line. That's a 26-yard pickup. So I guess we have a media timeout 
for the injury. So let's just yep. keep it here and we'll keep talking. We can do that. Hornets trying to pull this one out here. We have uh, five minutes, seven seconds left in regulation time. We are still tied at 14. They put together a nice long drive, eat up some clock, get the ball into the end zone or through the uprights with a field goal and come out 2-0 and on the season. And that would be sweet. And it would be huge because it, it could show that they could, it would prove they could overcome adversity. All right. They had the lead, lost it. And they got it back late in the game because this we call this the championship quarter. This is what championship. Champions are made in that fourth quarter, the last 15 minutes of the game. And if this team wants to show that they improve from week one to week two, they got to see the deal right here on this drive. This is the one where it happens, because if you give the ball back to Joseph Brunel with just a couple of minutes left in the game, it's going to be whoever has the ball last. And, and he can take the team down the field with his arm very quickly. Wilkerson with a big, big run there of 26 yards for Delaware State. First and 10. Jared Lewis now in at quarterback. Let's see what he does here on this first down. Lewis on the far side hash mark from the gun. Hands off. Wilkerson right side to the 50. 45 penalty marker. This one will come back. I have a feeling this one's going to come back. It was thrown right in the area of the line of scrimmage. And it will come back. Up in. Number 79. 10 yard penalty. Still first step. That's James King on the offensive line who got called for the hold. That right tackle. King, a veteran player for Delaware State. Played in four games in 2019, four games back in the spring. Came out of Valley Forge Military Academy, two year starting tackle there. 10 yard penalty. First and 20. Lewis scrambling in the backfield. Little dump pass off to Wilkerson, and that will get a little bit of yardage. Maybe two yards to make it second down and 18. Javid Lewis, you know, his mobility still not 100%. You can see him kind of bow leggedly limping out there. This is a guy who you know, is a very explosive runner. Uh, so he's already kind of operating with a disadvantage his strength is he can run the ball and he's limited right now so, the switch off from Tyreek Bethea to Jared Lewis here in the fourth quarter as he tries to get something going and hold on the officials blow the whistle as the ball is snapped that usually means it's a penalty on the offense five yard step Close off start. Offense, number 81, five-yard penalty, still second down. Put the ball down on the Delaware State 33-yard line. They have to get to the 44 of Georgetown for a first down. A couple of my bads on this series. You know what a my bad is, right, Gary? Yeah. That's the opposite of jumping up and down and drawing attention when you uh, do right. something good. Right. But it's very subtle. It's just tapping your chest. That's all. Yeah. Second down. About 24 yards to go. Jared Lewis throws to the outside. Complete to Trey Gross. Gross was hit as soon as he caught the ball, but he just kept bouncing off of tacklers and picked up a yard or two extra to the 42-yard line. Shortened up that situation a little bit here with third down and about... Uh, 13 yards to legal go. Legal substitution. Defense, 12 men on the field. Got a new legal decline. substitution on Georgetown with 327 left. Correction. He has accepted the penalty. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Okay. You know, in football, weeks one to weeks two are considered the weeks for greatest improvement in football players. It turns out Weeks two to weeks three 
are the same for referees. Okay, so here's the thing. What they're going to do, they're going to wipe the uh, catch by Trey Gross off. All right. They're going to take the five-yard penalty. They give up five yards on it, but they get a down back. So instead of third down and 13, it will be second down and 18. Lewis, quick screen pass over to Wilkerson. A lot of blocking there, and somebody just got through, and Submarine Wilkerson. That should have gone for big yardage with the number of linemen out there. It might be back to the tight end. Third down and 13 now for the Hornets. That screen was to Morales, and again, well, that, okay. just not the most gifted runner, open field runner at that tight end position. He can catch the ball, yeah, just instinctively doesn't know how to get north and south. He had a wall of red shirts in front of him. Third and 13. And hold on. Whistles blow. And fortunately for Delaware State, maybe, because it looked like the center might have hit his own leg with the ball as he snapped it. Snap it did not get Number back. Six. To Lewis, it's a snap infraction is what they call it. That's the third my bad on this series, the championship drive, the drive that determines whether or not you win the game. Three critical penalties in one drive. Third down and 18 again. I've never seen a call of snap infraction. This is 11 guys on the team. You got three, eight more my bads. Okay. <laughs> well, let's hope they hold on to the ball that long to get them all. Lewis on third down and long has to scramble right side. Throws. It's going to be incomplete over the head of Trey Gross. And a chance uh, for Rashawn Adams of Georgetown to make an interception. It sailed over both of their heads. Adams had gotten in front of Trey Gross. It's fourth down and 18. And the Hornets will punt. They need the best punt of the game here from Matt Knoll. Last time he was out there to kick, they ran into him. Five-yard penalty. It still would not give Delaware State a first down here. Only a roughing the kicking penalty could do that. Low snap. Noel gets rid of it. Line drive. Beautiful kick. Hits on the 11. Finds its way into the end zone. And Georgetown will have to try to take it 80 yards with 217 left in regulation. So Dell State's going to rely on their defense to come up with some big stops, hopefully get a three and out, get good field position for the offense, and just get them in field goal position. That's got to be the way you got to look at this if you're Dell State. Yeah, and if they do, that means Matt, Matt Knoll finally flipped the field for them because they may have an opportunity to get that good field position if they can get this three and out here. They were playing in their own territory inside their own 20 and 30-yard line most of that fourth quarter. So they've asked for this defense to play big all game. They're asking them for one more time, one more series of playing big. The clock a factor, 2.17 to go. Ball on the near side, hash mark, first and 10, Georgetown at their own 20. Joseph Brunel takes the snap, fakes the throw, runs with the ball, taken down just as he gets to the line of scrimmage, got a yard to the 21. He thought maybe he could catch the Delaware State defense back on their heels as he faked that he was going to throw the ball and then pulled it down on the option and ran it. The Hornets' defense stayed with it. Good now team the, speed, the Dell State. Yeah, they are quick. Now the ball on the far side hash mark on second and nine. Brunel again, flat-footed, stands, throws, right side complete, and taken down immediately after making the catch. Up to the 25-yard line. Third down and five. That was completed to Cameron Clayton. Creighton has had a pretty good game here. A bunch of catches this afternoon. And this crowd making some noise for Delaware State on this big third down and five. And a whistle blows. It could be third down and ten. It will be. Illegal procedure call against Georgetown. Georgetown shooting itself in the foot. Good, pretty good field position. Um, yeah. Third and five. Could have easily picked up, not easily picked up a first down, but they created a situation where you know, a, they might be punting the ball back to Dell State. That's a Georgetown, my bad. Yeah, there it is. Hey, listen, I don't mind. They're my bad. Yeah, yeah, we like them. 
a minute and 17 to play as the clock starts to run again. Far side hash mark, third down and 10. Brunel from the gun. Three receivers flooding on the left side. He is hit in the backfield and sacked. What a hit. He got, he got. And then he got nailed down. What a big hit in the backfield on Joseph Brunel. That's just great pressure by that Dell State interior. Timeout. Got to go state. Hornets uh, call the timeout here. The ball is now on the Georgetown 12-yard line, so they may have helped the team with field position here. Eric Montez on the sack for Delaware State. 54 seconds still to play. We'll see what kind of field position they're able to work out of this one. Reset the game clock to 56. All right, so the Hornets need a, possibly a good return on the punt. I think first and foremost, Gary, you got to, Del State's got to field the punt cleanly. Yeah. Just get possession of the ball, right? Obviously, the target is always going to be the end zone, but if they can just get to the 20, that should be deep enough in the red zone to win this game with a field goal. And I don't see a field goal kicker practicing right now, so someone should be telling them from Dell State, start kicking in that net because we need you ready. Late in the game last week, we did not see Jake Burdell attempt field goals because he had some trouble on a field goal attempt and extra points. So they'll put Davis Wa uh, Connor Hunt in the end zone to take the snap to punt on fourth down and long. Charles Peeler stands at midfield. It's a short kick, bounces at the 43. Peeler picks it up his own 49. He'll be swarmed under at the 50-yard line. Hornets only have to go half the field in 47 seconds to break the tie here. But wait a minute. Let's hold on. We have a penalty marker back at the five-yard line. What is this? Have to see what happens here and see if we can catch this call. Personal foul, leaping, number 11 of the defense. The 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Wow. That's, uh, I think, on page 87 of 88 pages in the rule book, leaping. Yeah. And they went deep on that book to... You're just... not allowed to, to leap over a lineman on a kick. And that shouldn't happen again for the remainder of the season, to be honest with you. It's one of those penalties that once you witness it once, it shouldn't happen again. No more leaping. No Just old-fashioned football. It gives the ball back to Georgetown at their own 27-yard line when it should be Hornets ball at the 50. And we have 47 seconds left in regulation time, tied at 14. Joseph Brunel, one of the better quarterbacks you might want to see on this Saturday afternoon as far as passing ability and smarts. But can he get his team downfield? Has to go. 73 yards. Drops straight back. Looks downfield. Looking, throwing, in the middle, incomplete. And behind his intended receiver, Joshua Tomas. And it was good that he threw that ball toward the ground because it would have been picked up, picked off if it had been up in the air a bit. Dell State just choosing to rush three guys, so that means they got eight back in coverage. Smart. Be a combination of zone and man coverage back there. Uh, but they still need to put some pressure on Brunel. That play knocked five seconds off the clock, down to 42 seconds. Brunel on second down. Little Brad pressure comes. He gets hit and sacked at the 20-yard line. He had no opportunity that one. Isaiah Williams beat his guy, and then all of a sudden, in two steps, he was on Brunel, hit him full in the chest, and took him down. Brunel had to pull that ball in quickly, or it could have gotten away. They brought a linebacker on the blitz on that last play, and those four guys confused the five offensive linemen. 
And that's what got Brunel's bell rung. Whew, boy, he knew he, he got hit on that one. Third down and 17. And they're going to let time run out, and we will go to overtime. It, it must be you, Mike Walker. The last time you were here with me, we had overtime. South right. Carolina State back in May. And I, I'm only expecting my fifth child uh, at the hospital in a couple of hours, so they must know that. That's why they called for overtime. So my son or daughter will be born without me. Thank you're, you, guys. You're expecting your fifth child. I hope you don't go into labor here. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you better hope they don't check to see who, who, who's Let's the leave father it at that. Let's leave, leave it at that. We're going to take a break here, and we'll come back with overtime. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN Plus, putting the U in HBCU. We're HSRN. I don't think Brunel wanted to run a play after that hit. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can be recycled. It's been the strength of the team uh, literally for the past couple of years. Um, so, you know, you might want to put them in a position to see if they can stop Georgetown. Then all you have to do is kick a field goal. Yeah. So if I'm Dell State, I think I want my defense out there first. So let's review the overtime situation just so uh, people who aren't familiar with it. The ball is put on the 25-yard line. A team has three plays, now four downs. If they make a first down, they keep the ball, and they can continue on. If they kick a field goal if they're the first team with the ball and they kick a field goal and the other team gets the ball they can tie the game again with a field goal or they can win it with a touchdown if the first team scores a touchdown the second team can tie the game with a touchdown and of course the conversions Hornets have opted to get the ball here to start this overtime Jared Lewis hands off to Savion Wilkerson who goes into the middle and gets three yards down to the 22 yard line So the critical thing is to make that first down. You want to make that first down. It gets you then inside the 15, enhances your chances if you come down to that fourth down and have to kick the field goal. But the best thing is if you're able to punch the ball into the end zone. Now Lewis looks to the sideline, gets the play. He calls the signal again, takes the snap. He'll keep it. They'll run it around the right side. Short side of the field. Doesn't have much running room there. And running the short side of the field, I always wonder. What about you? I don't know if there was a lane that was supposed to be set up there. If they thought his athleticism would allow him to get there quicker than the defense could recover. But a lot of bodies go into that area between the hash mark and the sideline there. Not as much room to run as if you go to the, the long side of the field. So here it is, third and about five and a half, six. Yep, third and five at the 20-yard line. Lewis takes the snap, looks downfield, wants to throw, can't find anybody open, looks again, throwing. It's incomplete, broken up by Camille Saunders for Georgetown. And it looked like uh, Kawana Kali from that left side was the intended receiver. So now the Hornets will try a field goal. This will be a 37-yard attempt. Joseph Delgado to try the field goal. The kick is blocked. And it will angle toward the sideline. Georgetown will not be able to cover it. Delgado's field goal attempt is blocked. Georgetown will now get the ball at the 25-yard line, and they will try to get something out of it. If you're Dell State defensively, you got to pitch a shutout because they're already in, you know, pretty much field goal position with the ball being spotted at the 25. So yep. you, they're going to ask the defense to come up and do something amazing, do something big. Now remember, in the second half, Davis Walker had a chance to put the Hoyas ahead by three and miss the field goal. So that's not an automatic that they're going to be able to kick one either. But how much were the Hornets hurt by that hurtling penalty or whatever they called it, leaping? Here's Brunel on first down from the 25. Hands it off, the fullback. Stakely into the middle to the 20. Five yards on the gain. 
You know, you can't really think back, but uh, that that uh, leaping penalty that took the ball away from Delaware State and gave it back to Georgetown, and the Hornets missed their opportunity to try to score in regulation. Yeah, you kind of wonder, is that something that they were doing in practice? or? Well, they should have been stopped if they did. The handoff again to Stakely. He pushes into the middle, and he's going to be close to the first down. I think he may be marked just shy of the 15-yard line. Yep. It'll be third down and one. We're in overtime in Dover, Delaware. No clock here. It doesn't matter how long they play. They'll keep playing until somebody finishes off the possessions with points and more points than the other team. Third and a yard. Stakely remains in the backfield with Brunel. Brunel, low snap. Stakely gets the carry, breaks through, and he is down to the Hornets' five-yard line. First and goal for Georgetown. They opened a huge hole in the middle of that Delaware State defensive line, and you haven't seen many of those in that area this season so far. Stakely again hammers it into the middle. They try to push forward. Did he get into the end zone? Touchdown, Georgetown, game over. Hoyas win it. We got the official indication from one side of the field, but not from the other. They're still talking to each other. Georgetown claiming a touchdown, but the only one official has indicated it, and the other officials, now they, now they are in agreement. It's a touchdown, Georgetown. And on, in overtime, for Delaware State, this is two overtime games now. One against South Carolina State, the final game last year. And today, this game goes to overtime, and Georgetown wins it on a five yard run by Stoke Stakely. They're not going to be happy with this one when they check it out on the film. This is one of those games that probably is supposed to be in the win column for Dell State. 